Um, Brian, just make me last. That's all I'll say. Yes, Nathan requested to talk last. Like, like I mean, like I mean, no, ago, no, no. I mean, like, so. I mean, like, as you go down through who's here, make me the la- as always. Like when I have something smart to say, put well, me. At the end. Who the fuck is Hugh? You're <laughs> Nate. Like, who is Hugh there? I saw. I heard that. Is too. Hugh there? <laughs> what the hell are you? Ta- what are you talking about? <laughs> you. That, no, 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 no. You, no. We're gonna go down this right now. What? What the hell are you pointing out now about my? You just said, just who's here? <laughs> who's like, here? Who's here? <laughs> no, who you is that even? He, he, man, and, and people E-W make fun of me there, for yeah. not knowing fucking English. God hey, damn. Okay. Who's here? Yeah, What's wrong with that? No, you walk. Okay. Walk. <laughs> no, you, you're, you're backtracking. You're gaslighting right now. It's not going to fucking work. We've got it on a record. It's on. It's, it's you dialed lose. in. You're Who, fucked. You lose. Who's oh here? Who's here? Hello, and welcome to Scuttlebutt, the war movie review podcast. We're happy to have you with us as we take a look at films from the dawn of cinema to today. We aim to provide a raw and unapologetic review of each film's cinematography, historical accuracy, and delivery. In the process of analysis, certain details will be revealed. These spoilers are only divulged to ensure a fair assessment of each film. We grab a double-double from Tim's this week on our way back to the Hindu Kush, with Paul Gross's 2015 film, Hyena Road, which is about the Canadian involvement in the Afghanistan war. As always, I'm joined by Mike A. Hey. Mike B. You can't steal my line again, but yes, hi. Nate. I want my life back. (laughs) And this week's special guest, Canadian Afghan war veteran and YouTuber, Devin K. Bonjour, mes amis. Ew. So guys, dun dun dun. (laughs) So guys, God. what'd you think? <laughs> I, uh, fuck this movie. Just, just fuck this movie. I, I, I had something all planned out and some like very funny thing, and uh, yeah, no, I'm just getting angry. Fuck this movie. Yeah. It's terrible. I hate it. it I, it just I don't gets worse. ever want to see it again. Um, uh, I wouldn't fuck this movie with your dick. <laughs> <laughs> Point. <laughs> I it's just it's just I, it's like everything that could have gone wrong went wrong everything I wouldn't have done they did <laughs> every single choice they did they I wouldn't do they did every single set piece that they I would choose that I would not choose they did every single camera style cinematography editing style I wouldn't ever choose on anything they did I don't know who made this movie and the thing is is that it had good promise. I'm just so flustered. I have never been to the point where I wanted to walk away. No, scratch that. I did walk away. I never want to stop it three times to, to go. No, I'm not going to watch the rest of this. This is this is trash. Literally, I can I can review this whole movie without having to watch it anymore. I literally got up, went to the bathroom. I got up and made food. I I left the movie running. There's sections of this movie I didn't bother even to watch because it is absolutely the worst fucking thing I've ever goddamn seen. It is awful, awful. <laughs> awful i never uh, want to see it again uh, it might be pearl le- pearl harbor levels of hatred i don't like this it is a bad so, fucking movie and i can't ever state that enough bah. Yeah. <laughs> no are you done <laughs> no okay. i'm angry i want my life back <laughs> i'm i am just i i you don't understand dude i you don't understand how fucking bad I couldn't handle Nate it. Is unhinged. I couldn't handle it. I, I like, li- we watched uh, the I, same movie. I, I understand. No, you don't, <laughs> <laughs> dude. Dude, I oh oh. Uh, okay, you no, don't. Keep just going. I, I could. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna hand the. To- I'm gonna hand the hatred torch over to someone else. But dude, just just it felt like. A sci-fi movie made in the early two hundred two thousands, almost two almost two hundreds, early two thousands, and then mixed with the Born Identity series, and tried to be a uh, freaking um, uh, Hurt Locker all at the same time while being on the Firefly set for TV series. Like it's just I and I love Firefly, so don't take that's not what I mean. It's just like I I. Ugh. 
Ugh. I hate, I did not like this. I'm going to punish it. I want this to be known. I will punish this. It will be punished. So, so Nate, really quick before you pass it up, show us on the doll where the movie touched you. <laughs> Everywhere. Dude, That's I'm the traumatized. answer. traumatized. It's just, I, I, I am normally just like, hey, you know, they did their best. You know, they did their thing. You know, no, fuck that. No, this movie's trash. I hate it. I have like two pages of notes, and I'll really quickly say what I. Oh, this I movie died on the so. editing room floor. The cinematographer should be. <laughs> I can't stress that enough. I just. If it makes you feel just, better, the editor <laughs> did hang himself in 2017. So. He did? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> oh, you you like, just made my face go like. Four don't get his years. hopes up. <laughs> I just. Like, David warns me. What happened? My, just made my heart drop through my ass. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> all i have to say about this movie can be summed up in two sentences first it's an hour and 40 minutes too long they could have kept the first it. 10 minutes and the last 10 minutes and made it one 20 minute short and it would have made sense and secondly they could have renamed it don't shit where you eat <laughs> like yeah that's all i have to say we'll get into more of it later you take my fucking notes Brian. but anyway um yeah. so so what i wanted to say is uh off nate um i uh i actually i admit i did not watch this entire thing um because i like i don't know at the uh at what felt like the seven hour mark, but it was actually like, you know, maybe, maybe an hour and 10 minutes. I started to skip through it and I was like, okay, can this, because it was like two hours. I was like, oh my yeah. God, this thing is like long. And, um, I, uh, so yeah, I guess like what's, I, I, whenever I find, see a movie like this, I'm whenever I'm watching it and I'm just like not grabbed it all by, because of course I don't really know much about this history or anything like that, or this, these, you know, events, but at the same time, like, um, I'm like, what? Why was this made? So I, I, I kind of went and tried to look it up, and yeah, it was written and directed by uh, Paul Gross uh, is yeah. his name, which is an interesting name, and uh, he stars in it. He's the silver fox yeah, he's guy, the old guy with the, the beard, the, the like the, officer, the intelligence. Yeah. Oh, like, so captain. we have a hello Mark situation going on. We have a little Tommy yeah, Wiseau yeah, yeah, thing yeah, going yeah, on yeah, here, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and uh, so yeah, he. Um, Apparently, this was his whole, this was his baby in every which way. And I just have to say, like, why the fuck did you make this? Like, when I was watching it, I was like, is this a true story? Like, why is any of this even don't, like. Don't, 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 uh, don't okay. spike, <laughs> don't, don't, don't spike your baby on the touchdown line, okay? It's, it's like. But I'm just, but dude, like, I'm watching, I'm like, what is the point of it, all this? It just seems like, why, what's the point one. of this fucking movie? It's entirely, it's I know, entirely that, that's, it's really annoying. <laughs> it's really i mean i guess it's like if you want to it's it's there's a lot of it especially during the montage scenes that it just seems like military porn like it's a recruitment tool yeah. or something I mean, like it, that it kind of is where actually we, <laughs> right yeah where we're getting like all these these that's what is i was that getting why you joined like, okay, no, 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 no. this movie <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we're getting all these shots of like you know this this fucking like stock rock and roll music playing yeah. with like all these shots you of like, that artillery going off burned and out stuff. high power <laughs> right yeah and then like you know all anytime i see a movie that has like these like extreme helicopter shots it just looks like a commercial for the the army you know and uh um so yeah i was uh i, I was very very bored by this i don't think i'm as angry as nate is but uh i was particularly bored i could not care less about what was happening in it and uh i don't know what uh, the the first scene when they enter the that that uh, little like village and that the old guy who has like the really awful like fake the beard ghost hair, yeah, with uh, the silver the spray paint in the beard yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah with the silver spray paint in the beard he picks up the grinade the and, like, husky eyes that the made, fuck? yeah he picks up he picks up the grenade just like tosses it that made me laugh so uh <laughs> i uh yeah it's a very 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 dumb movie and i didn't remember i didn't pay attention to most of it because it was so goddamn boring it's pretty bad yeah mike okay so i like brian have many notes and uh, we'll get to that um there seems to be some crossover already. Uh, yeah, it was, I didn't start taking notes. And then I was like about 30, 40 minutes in. I'm like, well, I'm taking notes. And when I take notes on a film, it's, bad. It, it's not good. It's really not because <laughs> it's like, I have to write this horse shit down to remember it because my mind erases it automatically. 
because it's not worth taking up space yeah. in my fucking hard drive. Like that's not it's not worth it. And so um anyway, the plot plural like there's supposed to be three plots it's like well it's like it's like sewage sludge just like fucking amalgamating into one thing it all smells like shit it's all it's all just nasty shit you want to stay away from but you're like like, what are we doing here like what exactly is going on and don't worry i'll tell you i'll tell you what really went on well all right all right we'll (laughs) get there we'll get there um but yeah it was just like again i had to take several breaks too like i couldn't watch it straight through i'm like jesus christ like it's it, and you know brian honestly when you said it was like the born identity i was like or like the whole series that. that was nate yeah or nate nate somebody wow. said that and i said yes i i don't remember there was it's so much the rage cheese, coming out you know it's yeah it's all the cheese yeah <laughs> it's the it's fromage yeah. Don't, don't get pissed off because we have better cheese than the rest of the fucking U.S. But like, I'm not. Um, but no, you are. You're raging. I can no. see it. I you're can, fuming. I you're can fuming. Feel you're your absolutely anger. fuming. You know, I can feel I'm standing anger. on a tower of New York pizza. Go, go fuck yourself. <laughs> go fuck yourself. Yeah, schmuck. Right. You're schmuck. Um, you're fucking. Schmuck. But anyway, um, no, it's just like it, it's just so fucking stupid. It's like, okay. This guy, the director, who apparently is Mr. Silver Fox in this film that I didn't even bother to do research on because I didn't want to waste any more time in my fucking Paul life. Gross. On this, you know, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, aptly named, aptly yeah, named, Mr. You know. Gross. Yeah. yeah, Mr. Gross. Um, it's like so you watch like three or four different films and you try to combine it into one and having Canadians be the center of focus, which we're gonna get into in a little we're bit get very into. about were they actually Canadians? Yes. Because some of these act no 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 I'm talking about the actors no no like, not the actors no where the fuck did they get the actors from but anyway <laughs> that's one thing and it just it was like so oh no no Christ no um <laughs> they didn't uh and it's like it's just cliche shit and then it's so predictable and it's like okay this is gonna happen this whatever you're using it's fucking it's retarded it's fucking it's just it's just pe- I'm sure a lot of people in Canada are like fangirl oh over. yeah you know. We, we we got we got this film out you know hero owed about here about the, the Canucks in Afghanistan you know yeah there there ain't nobody else have been doing films about this you know bud and so we got one we got one it's like well it's it's horseshit like if that's if that's <laughs> how you want your your involvement in Afghanistan to be portrayed so be it but it's fucked yeah they could have we'll picked put it a that lot way. better stuff than this oh yeah so and and also before Devin gets into it I just wanna I just wanna relay. I also didn't have the subtitles, and I don't know if there was any. Um, there was never a, uh, when is this taking place? There's It's Kandahar, but it's like, okay, well, where are you guys at when you're outside of Kandahar? Because there's Kandahar City and Kandahar, like the base, the air base. And they never say where they're at, like where they're operating at. It's like, okay, so this is not a historical film to, from the get-go. This is just an action film. That happens to take place, and the Canadian soldiers are the subject of it. So, anyway, I'll uh, I'll pass the hate torch on to Devin K. We don't need a full history lesson; just okay. give us the the basic deets and overview. Okay. Well, yeah. How, how are you? Why are you considered the professional? Because uh, I've actually touched that. this pavement in real life. Okay. Like I touched it physically. I peed on. I what peed year? on this road. This would have been like what year? <laughs> I peed on this road. <laughs> I peed on this road. <laughs> But, Did you mark your territory? But, <laughs> See, we, we should actually make way, a movie about it's not this, even a about full the real road. thing and call it that. This isn't even a full road. This whole movie's talking about a 16-kilometer section, which is about a 10-mile section of road that the Canadians had to pay. That's it. It's not even the full road. There's a whole high, whole ass highway made by, like, the U.S. Navy and the U.S. Army. The Canadians only did 10 fucking miles of it. All right? For one. And for two... Uh, this is an entire fabrication. It was not this elaborate. There wasn't all these cool attacks. There wasn't hardly anything that happened. The guys that were building the road probably maybe got shot at a handful of times by, like, small arms fire. But other than that, it probably didn't do anything because this was actually a hearts and minds, op- like, operation. It wasn't, like, a military operation. It it did project through military force because, obviously, having roads allows you to project military force because you can travel a lot easier. It's easy to see if the road's been tampered with compared to like dirt and stuff because it's a paved highway but it was toted as a hearts and minds operation and 
this is an entire fabrication about like all this attacks and all this crap. And by the way, this movie doesn't even look like Afghanistan. And I found out because it's shot in Jordan. It's not even shot in Afghanistan. <laughs> it's not, it's not shot anywhere yeah. that looks like it. So, but it is shot on a uh, uh, a rented Canadian base in Jordan that they currently do with uh, what's called Operation Impact, where they are affecting the Middle East by like giving aid to a bunch of Middle Eastern countries out of a base that they rent in Jordan. Um, and a lot of the extras in the movie are actually, and like the vehicles and all the body armor and all the weapons and everything are actually from that base in Jordan and they're actual Canadian soldiers, which is cool to see. But like, it's, it's an entire fabrication. They didn't even get the unit right. So they, so like at the end where you're seeing like the, the funeral scene, they're showing the princess Patricia's Canadian light infantry, like beret badges. Okay. The actual unit that did this was the 22nd regiment out of Quebec, which is the Van Dues as they're known. And they're a line infantry regiment. And they hardly had any action during this whole actual thing. You mean they didn't fight off Taliban wave attacks? No, no, they didn't. And the Taliban don't fight like that. They're smart. They're fucking smart, okay? They know that their shot-out AKs will still shoot a 1,000 meters, and they will map out a 1,000 meters. They have every fucking square foot of that country mapped out. They know exactly where to put their sights to hit people, all right? I, uh... If I can if I can jump sure. in real quick, when at the beginning when they first like came under fire, and then we just see like them firing back, and there's just guys with their AKs just running. Like, running they don't the do open. that. No. Like, yeah, I was like, I was like, oh, it's gonna be one you, of these. You mean, you mean okay. North Korean <laughs> style wave yeah. attacks, and or or and or hmm, <laughs> something's yeah. not right. Pan the scope, Taliban with binoculars. Right. Yeah, <gasps> like, like, well, it's like Chris Jones said. We asked him the same question. It's like. Do the, do the Taliban actually just run at you like no. that? And he's like, no, no they, they know what they're doing. Very fucking <laughs> smart. They have burned out fucking AKMs from the fifties. That's the primary weapon they have, and like they will adjust the sights out to the fucking max, a thousand fucking meters, and they can get close with their sights maxed out with basically smoothbore fucking AKs and land shots next to you, out of a tiny fucking little like baseball sized hole they punch out of a wall. You know, they're very smart when it comes to attacking and ambushes. That's why we fucking lost, okay? That's why we all fucking lost. It's because nobody's going to take that place, and they want to be left alone. And we should have fucking left them alone. But at least they got a nice highway out of it. <laughs> well, ten miles yeah. of good old Quebec. That's right. You know, Ten miles pavement. of good old Canadian blacktop. <laughs> <laughs> so... <laughs> In 200 years, we'll make a documentary about it. Yeah, how it's falling apart and it's disrepaired because it was made for the uh, the cheapest materials the government could fucking buy. <laughs> Two inches thick. Yeah, I, I yep. mean, I just just to jump in after my like hate speech, literally on this freaking movie. Um, I mean, again, I mean, I, I I've settled down. My blood has not been stopped boiling a little bit. I mean, it just it it, it to me, it's like it it kind of irks me because. You know, it's the only film <laughs> like that I could find of Canadian forces in Afghanistan, and it's that film. And the, and the thing that's like really, really mind boggling to me, it's like there were certain things in this movie that actually some of them were really well. Like I started thinking it's going to be the turning point. Like, OK, I've made it this far. Is it going to turn? You know, OK, maybe they finished with the stupid Alexander the Great voiceover plot throw in thing constantly yeah. that made no freaking no sense. sense at all yeah you know i get yeah. the quote <laughs> I, I thought get, that too right off he the died bat. in india by the way like, <laughs> he was in afghanistan for a very like, short like period of time. it's just you, you you combine it with that but then you know you, you you pull it into the thing and it's like when where i thought it might start kind of going in a better way was you know the okay they met up with the the lion what was it what was it called that guy's called the the ghost the, ghost. the lion, lion the, the, yeah the ghost and it's like the lion whatever <laughs> yes spray right, paint beard yeah. god when that when that camera did <laughs> mr rustolium when that camera did a 360 and stopped on a on a on an elder afghanistan man who was with who husky was, eyes yeah with husky <laughs> eyes and spray paint and beard i laughed I laughed. Me, me too. Just, I, I, I cackled, laughed like for a good thirty seconds. I mean, so my my point is, is when they meet him in the in the in I think it was in town in Kandahar. I think it was, 
and it was right before the 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 car explosion where they were in the car and you can see them in a town in Jordan I guess and they're driving I was like okay this looks like okay they're pressing in the camera it's not so wide you know we're going to press in we're going to do this the quality's looking better maybe it'll do better the explosion went off I was like that's pretty good and then it cuts to a car burned out from the inside out and they're perfectly fine. I went, nope. Yeah. Where did the glass yeah. go? Did it? Fu- yeah. Sorry, I have to say this. Where did it go? No, I did thought the same thing. Imp- it's like, wow. Like, their faces yeah. are clear. They have nothing. Like, fucking. If you look at people, you don't see dust settling or anything. Like, yeah. on an interstate or something, you're, like, you're fucking glass windshield. everywhere. You know, yeah, what the yeah. fuck? Yeah. I, I saw that and I'm like, what the hell? I did like how they were kind of sluggish and like, yeah. one guy kicked the well, door. Well, like, well, like, here's the thing. If you're that, but, if you're that close to a VBID, if you're that close to a VBIED, you're gonna get some concussive sure. uh, reaction yeah. from that. Like mm-hmm. you're gonna, your nose is gonna be bleeding, your ears are gonna be bleeding. It's, it's so insanely loud and powerful from a VBID that if you're that close, you're not just gonna be able to walk out and stumble around for thirty seconds and then yeah, be and fine. You don't have all the fire. Yeah, explosions well, right, right, don't exactly. Yeah. Yeah. What, what, mean the fire. grenade that blew up the radio? Yeah, that, yeah. Like, and the whole turned into a fucking into Molotov. Flames? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like yeah, it's like, like yeah, like, it's not a big black cloud and, of shrapnel. And, and also, I guarantee you, they did that after the car caught on fire, after they blew up the radio, and they went back and got that shot because the inside of the car wasn't burned. The next shot after, Fair. so it, it, it was thing, it was oh. it was little things like that. It's the it's continuity. It's it's this whole negatives in the shot again. I think it where this movie fails is, you know, timing everywhere. Well, yes, but timing, timing, and and seeing, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Timing and framing in a shot can be completely done in editing. Like if you can't get in the moment, you can do it in editing, and it's a combination of. Whoever the cinematographer was and the editor, it's just not their forte. It's just not their movie. It's not their style. It's just, you know, you can make bad props look good by punching in and, and framing out and maybe getting partial it or whatever, or continuity can be better with the way of editing. But man, like, it's just, it's like, it would, it would have lulls, it would very, very small lulls of like good or not lulls or peaks of, good quality this could be good for something and then it would dip back down to like trash and it's like you know good line good cut maybe yep. maybe four or five shots of good interaction and character development then back down again like like what another thing that threw me off was a dude like oh well uh you know what happened to them and then the other dude just starts Hulk raging through the whole entire thing, throwing everything around. Yeah, and just like, knocking the trash yeah that, I, that was weird. And this guy's supposed yeah. to be like, I was like, what was that? Forces, and those guys are fucking serial killers. Like, if a grenade goes off next to them, they don't move because they're fucking serial killers. They don't, they're calm all the time to the point where it's like upsetting to everybody around them. That's like why they picked them to do that. And the fact that that guy lost his shit is just off the charts wrong. It's just, but it's just again, just to, again. It's just peaks. It was just, it was just up and down, to, weird things, weird timing, bad editing, bad cinematography, bad framing, bad props, bad set, putting money forward on something else and taking money back where he should have put it forward. Just little things here and there that just made the whole thing, unfortunately, just. Yeah. There is a, there is a, a, a uh, feel about the whole thing. It feels very milk toast the entire time, like. Uh, I mean, what yeah, is it's like toast that, when, when, uh, it's very hammed up. You don't know no. what that means. Now. Uh, that's, you know, just like very bland, very plain, very vanilla. Like it's just kind of bleh. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, that's how it felt like when, when uh, you know, uh, Mr. Gross started narrating. <laughs> and yeah. it was like, it, it, it seemed like it seemed like a parody. Almost. He's, you know, he's like out here in Afghanistan or something. It's just like what the hell? And then he's telling about all these allegories and shit. And it's just like, it just sounds what, like psycho babble. It doesn't what, sound was it just you me. Know. Or was though you don't understand what's going on here. Never explained. <laughs> I don't even remember, dude. Like <laughs> that was for the whole thing at the end. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. The whole, like, pill- you gotta, you gotta watch, the whole, gotta like, watch the entire the, film. Yeah. You gotta see the whole thing. Afghanistan is, I mean, you know, I did get up and just let it run. Cause I didn't give a fuck. I want to say this, though, before we really trash it, because I only have two good things to say about this movie. There were two shots I really liked. Um, the first was when that fucking guy that's really annoying, like, the whose, whose wife showed him his tits. Like, uh, oh, the church guy. 
when he gets fucking shot in the face, I thought that was really yeah. good. Because I loved yeah. how, how instant it was, and I loved how his face was fucked. Yeah. They totally stole that from, like, yep. SPR yeah. on the beach. But I really and, like and, that. And, I really, and, no, that, I that, that was, and, really and the cool. prosthetics were really good. And when they stepped on the mines. Yes. Until the, until the like, you know, black guy's legs, like, <laughs> yes, popped yes, off yes, and he yes, flew. Yes. Like, like, yeah. a, like, like, a, uh. like a Lego figure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, right? It's like ragdoll physics. But I, really I did like liked, that face effect. Yeah. I, I really like that, and I liked how they're shocked about it, and I liked how the firefight starts right after that, because I, I thought it was just really well done, and how they're like, we have to bring the body with us, but clearly he's fucked, you know? That was cool. And the other one I liked was, like, 10 seconds after that, when they're running to that, like, little, like, mud hut, and they have the one shot of, like, the guy's feet running, and they're doing the circular motion, and you see, like, the bullets landing all around him. I thought that was creative. And I thought that was an interesting, you know, artistic <laughs> frame to put into it. Yeah. But the rest of the movie sucked. I, the rest of it, I, like Mike I said, just, milk toast. I, I just annoying. remembered the thing that made me cackle at the very at that same scene. You know, they're building up this this guy's this guy's the ghost. You know, he's uh, the, the, the guy is amazing. You know, the, and yep. then he's like, give him a weapon. Yeah. And the first, he holds in his fucking M4 yeah. above his head. Yeah. yeah. Just but spraying full fucking on, spray, bud. full spraying on over yeah. the head. Just. Yep. <laughs> and then he takes like 17 bullets yeah. to the yeah. back yeah. yeah his like well, arm gets shot instantly if you look at yeah. it like, <laughs> yeah. and then, but he's still like? he's still he's still on the m4 up like wait right. wait wait, his wait. Arm gets let's hit get the nomenclature no... right it's the c8 sfw so okay i'm gonna oh, i'm gonna call it an m4 because it's a lot <laughs> shorter to say. Yeah, yeah um so he's still holding he's still holding the m4 up and he gets shot in the arm and there's like no reaction it's just like <laughs> well the no, script goes a off. It's a it's a digital yeah. effect. None yeah. of the guns right. it's like, at any no, point in the movie no, he's had the line any of the recoil. desert guys. He's on opium the whole time. Yeah, that's fair. He doesn't feel yeah, none, shit. None, none, no, dude, okay, so you've never been high on opium, down, but you like, <laughs> do get superpowers. My, I, like I will give well, you that. There we go. I, there I, we will, go. I, I do true. want to say something though. I called Brian prior to us meeting tonight, and I'm like, "Hey, how's it going?" He's like, "I'm trying to finish this piece of shit." And I'm like, "Okay, yeah." He goes, he goes. I go, "I'm not going to say anything. I just want to do. We talk about stuff." And he goes, "Oh." I'm like, I'll let you go. He goes, okay. Oh, he just pulled a head out of the bag. All right. Like, <laughs> yep. <laughs> and I went, yeah, it was that fucking yeah, and scene. I was like, <laughs> and I'm just like, I'm I'm getting through whatever this yeah, is. Yeah. And, and and he's like, bye. And I'm like, oh, they just pulled a severed head out of a bag. <laughs> yeah. Go. And I'm like, I'm like, like you know, uh, I, yeah. I think I said, I think here, I said, yeah. oh, I know exactly where you are. Okay, bye. <laughs> yeah, bye. <laughs> uh, so, all right, let's go through notes now really quick. Um, I have one question. For uh, Devin, Me. because I'm pretty sure Canadians aren't that different than most coalition like slash NATO forces in Afghanistan. Um, Besides their heads, you know, splitting off their yeah. jaws. <laughs> it is like South well, and, we can't and, afford uh, your HD American revolution. Uh, but okay, okay, so like here, how about this? So. How about this? So we're going on a foot patrol in the city, right? This is big lead up, this big thing. Um, so why are you sending a fucking sniper out with his rifle on a foot patrol with the infantry? It's a good question. You wouldn't do that. Into a town. Right. Weird, right? Weird. <laughs> I mean, it's a rhetorical question. It really is. It's a rhetorical yeah. question. I just want to I wanted to ask that for the, the listeners. But like like yeah, half the people in the movie are snipers, I guess. So <laughs> I guess well, no, he, he's they got all the take time in the sniper. But they, uh, yeah, but they he's all the also take time with though. like the C eight SFW. And yeah. it's like, okay, well, what are you then? Yeah, that, that's the three thirty eight. That's what you're talking about. The the big fuckers. Uh, no, that those big fuckers are actually McMill and Tac fifties, which is what the Canadians actually used hmm. in Afghanistan, and that's what the world record longest sniper shot was actually taken on this road by a Canadian, and so, it's with the McMill so, yeah, and Tac fifty one. That was very so. early. A fifty caliber bolt action yeah. rifle with no recoil. God, yeah. how does Canada <laughs> have this immense fucking? technology um, and the rest of the world's never to be fair if too. you've never shot a mcmillan tac 50 it's not like a barrett it doesn't have anywhere near the muzzle presence it doesn't have anywhere near the recoil actually but it's still not so, nothing. so it's, it's like literally no. it's like literally shooting a blank no it's not nothing a blank but, a 50 caliber blank has more recoil than this yeah, fucking thing did it, this it didn't move at all because they're digital all digital effect. effects yeah but like the mcmillan tac 50 <laughs> is actually it's like a twenty five thousand dollar rifle so, right, and yeah. so that he's going to be going out on a foot patrol with the infantry in that instance with a twenty five thousand dollars. No, no, no. Rifle in the, and, in, and yeah. when they're going out on all the foot patrols, they're using three hundred eight <laughs> Prairie Gunworks uh, Timberwolves, which are actually a Canadian yeah, so, sniper so rifle as well. Also, so. my, my, I guess my rhetorical question leads into: Would you not, if you so chose to have that guy go out that day, 
would you not have him on some really far Overwatch? No, I'm definitely right? room clearing with a 50 cal. <laughs> no, yeah. right. So that answers my yeah. question. Yeah. <laughs> to, <laughs> yeah. To extrapolate off that question, so to come back to the Chinese wave attacks, <laughs> if you were a commander of a, were those strikers that were coming to extract them in yes. the beginning? Uh, no. Well, they had turrets, right. but uh, well, it's a Canadian like LAR or something. I know well, a they're made by like, Hitachi. They're for all intents and purposes like the same people that make the vibrator that the women like so much. Um, like for reals, they're made in Japan. Um, by I was by say, Hitachi. I was gonna do a joke from the makers of the Vibo Manic. Dead serious. M two eight seven armored car. Like, honestly, I'm not even joking. They're made by Hitachi, and they're they're APCs. They're basically for all intents and purposes. The seats vibrate. Yeah, they do actually, but um. <laughs> Um, yeah, they're made by Hitachi. And then they actually got the Canadian tanks right, the Leopard 2. Canada uses the Leopard 2 hmm. and a bunch of other cool stuff. All, yeah. all 50 of them? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. All 50 Canadian tanks that are Leopard 2s. You're actually right. And you're not right, actually, because it's actually only 47. But, um, oh, yeah. Close. So, to get back, yeah, so if you are a commander of an armored reconnaissance car section and you're four minutes away from your pickup, and you see a huge explosion and like 150 Taliban run over a hill and attack a four-man team. Will you help out with your 20 millimeter auto cannons, <laughs> or you just sit on the road and say, "Wow, no, hey, that guy sucked to be there, bud. Let's take some tea." Like, you just take fucking, your Hitachi uh, vibrator that's like, hooked up to the cigarette lighter in your tank, and you go to town on yourself. Ah, yeah. that's what it yeah, is. Yeah, that's you what know. you do. They were so. too busy, you know. The Taliban had it in with the vibration company. That's right, yeah. So, you know, that's, that's what it right. was. That's right, they had it in with... No, but, like, seriously, Devin, like... It, it's I fucked, mean, yeah. It, if, those, if those guys saw... No, they would have definitely that rolled out and engaged, yeah. Yeah. That was yeah, what I was so. screaming yeah, on the couch doing. I was literally <coughs> doing, yeah. like, like Leonardo DiCaprio, like, sitting back and going... You know, like yep, pointing. Going, it, did, it just makes no sense because there's like rules of engagement and there's like forms of doing stuff and like ways you do things. And the, Canada operates almost mirror for mirror exactly the way the United States does. And because it's actually a lot of that joint doctrine was made with France, the UK, Canada, and America, who were founders of NATO. So that was an accurate portrayal, then, if, you, if they go up for the US, ROE, or UF. Yeah, Pretty okay. much. So, Moving but on. like, yeah, it's going to be I'm all the same. Yeah, it's going to be all the same rules of engagement, the same way of doing things. Yeah, you guys are being engaged with guys that are armed. Yeah. You're going to fucking go up and provide you fire. Do you do not engage know, somebody if they do not have a radio or a weapon. I mean, there might be some guy from Manitoba that just wants to see 150 Taliban gazelles run through the hills of Kandahar. You'd be surprised. I mean, I mean, if I have a McMillan Tech 50, I don't care if it's a fucking rock. I'm going to shoot at it. Like, <laughs> okay, so, so let's backtrack slightly. Let's backtrack slightly. This in rock's this got scene. a radio and an AK. Yep. So we're we're going yeah, in, back in this, to the the Hitachi tanks. Okay. Where do you want it? In this? No, no, <laughs> oh. no. We're going. Bef- we're going before okay. that. Uh, well, kind of in between. Um, so. <laughs> You and I have both shot 50 caliber weapons. Before, I have. Like the 50 BMG, to be specific, yes. not a Hawken 50 caliber inline, whatever. So, <laughs> what are the odds that um, freshly uh, a patched uh, blacktop <laughs> is going to be penetrated by a 50 BMG from that angle, specifically in that distance? Incinerary. Come on, Mike. It would skip and, right and, the fuck off of it, unless it was really soft, like oh. just poured. It would skip right off of it. Yeah. And so even if, okay, so let's give them the benefit of the doubt, right? It's soft. Yeah. What would it do? Well, e- even if it was soft, like somebody like disturbed it to like did plant an explosive there, like supposedly the movie makes out to be, even though they're like, I'm a hundred yards away and we detonate an IED that's underneath blacktop that would just focus all the explosion through that hole and would not cartwheel them end over end a hundred yards away. Um, but it's, well, but how's that round, how's that round setting off the, uh, the artillery? It's round? not because yeah, one fifty fives don't do that. And that's the primary thing that they used in Afghanistan as IDs was one fifty one five two. Yeah. By the way. What, yeah. Soviet one five two artillery shells yep. and they don't just go off when you shoot them. Right. Weird. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of what I was, they have like a metal shell 
that's really hard to like penetrate through, even if you do have a fifty cal. After even, even a direct going hit? through pavement, no, even yeah. like a direct hit, it's gonna just kind of deform. It's, it's it gonna leave a dimple and bounce off. Yeah, it'll leave, it'll leave, yeah, leave a dimple. dimple and then bounce off. It's yeah, a dimple, dimple, <laughs> dimple. Wow, nice callback. Yeah, yeah. Nice callback. For the episode you weren't there. No, hey, dude, I had to edit it and okay. listen to it. So, <laughs> so uh, Brian, how many notes do you have? Because I've got. A decent amount. I have more. Uh, I have more. I have points. more. And I I'll, could talk I'll about this whole, all Wait, night. No, 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 don't you interrupt. Laugh don't don't you interrupt my time. rage. Okay, we don't. <laughs> yeah. You'll laugh. Go Ready? Go Here's one of the notes. Why is the bad guy Saddam? He's not. He looks just He's like not Saddam. Saddam. He's. I know, but the KSB. Okay, whatever, like, like he looks like Saddam. He like, might as well. Yeah, be. it's yeah. Me, they did <laughs> like, that on purpose. They made him look like Saddam Hussein and Osama bin Laden because they're the two bad guys. Are those the Canada's worst enemies? Like, there's no other. No, like, Canada's you know, worst enemies is the United States. It's like the nice guy in the apartment living above a meth lab. So, like, there's an Ottawa Journal like post where it's like, you know, a target with you know Saddam on it, and it's you know, yeah, it's like the New York Post one for Bin Laden. It's because it's it's recognizable from the news. That's why those two figures True. and that kind of image is recognizable from the news. So maybe Saddam did have a play in the weapons of mass destruction. He could have. Yeah, he did have weapons saying. of mass destruction as yeah. the United States. George W. found it out. <laughs> Mike, oh, Mike sure. B. Space, right? <laughs> <laughs> but no, Saddam, oh, you yeah. froze. Oh, you I'm, froze. I'm, okay, you froze. You froze. <laughs> Sorry. Um, um, there was um, uh, one thing I will comment is that you know the. Uh, the Canadian uh, 50 cal, I can't remember the model you said, Devin. The McMillan Tac 50? Yeah, it's a better uh, beheader than the guillotine. So, you know. That is. It's actually a. It's guillotine. actually a. Fe- it's I guillotine. forgot about that. <laughs> yeah, it's guillotine because it's a French word. It's heads. And it slowly cuts through your neck. Yeah, it's like slow. It, it slowly. Yeah, it definitely won't can, fucking yeah. tear you apart at the distances it's they It's called were a saw cutter. Yeah. <laughs> saw cutter. <laughs> but. <laughs> The fun fun fact, like, uh, so the McMillan Tech 50 is actually an American-made rifle that Canada bought. And it, so Canadian 50 caliber ammo is round-nosed. It's not Spitzer ammo. And so all the snipers use American-made 50 caliber ammo when they shoot. And it has a different ballistic coefficient, but it's also fucking way hotter than canadian ammo so just the fact that it does slowly cut through people means that it's definitely not true i actually uh have a connection to this and i'm hoping to one day get him on here uh he's a military intelligence veteran he was there when that shot happened because it was if i believe it was very early on it was 01 or 02 um when that that shot was taken and what uh, shot the world longest happened the longest shot yeah and and from what I was told from this guy that was there, and I know he was there, it's no bullshit, um, he'd ran out of ammunition. He used and American ammo, they, yeah. He, he was connected with um, these SF guys that were also with some 10th Mountain Division guys, because 10th Mountain Division was one of the first American units that was in Afghanistan, 0102. So what happened was is that they ran out of ammo, and these SF guys were like, we'll get you ammo. So they walked down the hill, and there was a bunch of uh, 10th Mountain Division Humvees. And they just started taking 50 cal. They took 50 cal off. MG yeah. ammo, not even precision sniper ammo. Yeah, yeah. just MG yep. ammo. Yeah, they, they yeah. took it off. And, and they're like, what are you doing? Like, I'll oh, go fuck yourself. Yeah. So they walked to the top of the hill and they gave him two cans and they're all watching. So they're all get binoculars and shit. And this is a guy really far out. And he was an RPG um, rocket gunner. He didn't have a weapon, but he had rockets on his back. And the first round like went right over his head. And the guy was like, whoa, he's looking around like what's going on. The next round fucking hits one of the RPGs. And he, so he's stumbling around like, whoa, you know, the, the fucking third round. This is within 60 seconds. Yep. Just whams him right in the fucking chest. Yep. But yeah, I can I can confirm from somebody I know that was there that that stolen American fifty cal ammo from Humvees. Yep. That they. Just uh, uh, the hill I don't like the word stolen. Let's use acquired. Uh, appropriated. Appropriated. Yeah. Yeah. Appropriated. Acquired. Acquired is the the actual legitimate yeah. term that we five finger so. discount. But, but yeah, yeah it's acquired. Just you just acquired. It has. <laughs> it wasn't as good as the, like because the Canadians actually so Prairie Gunworks makes all of the uh, Canadian sniper ammo. Um, and it's basically four guys in a garage. Prairie Gun- yeah, it literally is. Prairie Gun Works makes all of the Canadian sniper rifles, except for the McMillan Tech 50. Uh, they make the Prairie, Gu- uh, Prairie Gun Works Timberwolf, which is like their standard like 308. And they also make one in like 338, too, I believe. 
Um, sniper rifles, they're called different things, but like it's the same rifle once just struck down for 308. Um, but they they make all of the precision sniper ammo basically by hand in a garage for the Canadian snipers. And so obviously if you have four guys in a garage supplying an entire military's worth of snipers, they can't keep up during like a 20 year fucking war. So um, they, yeah, would appropriate American ammo all the time. And it would actually perform very well because it was loaded hotter and it wasn't as consistent, but it had a better ballistic coefficient because it was loaded hotter. And so the longest sniper round, yeah, the longest confirmed sniper kill, which is like, what, 2.4 miles or something like that, was done by a Canadian with American MG ammo. Yeah, out of a McMillan Tag 50. I think the, it's been beaten, though, recently in the last five years. Really? Um, yeah, I yeah, I think, I think so. Was, yeah. yeah. By a 338, if I'm, if I'm not, not mistaken. And not to go off on a tangent, but apparently they went after that guy for killing an unarmed soldier because the guy yeah, didn't have a weapon. Was, he had yeah. rockets. Yep. And it was a big thing. And they had a, like a war crimes tribunal. He did so have a war crimes. He did get off of it, though. He got off in the Canada end. Canada likes to go after your heroes. So. That's right. Well, he wasn't really a hero. He was just doing his job like everyone else. Like well, The whole hero yeah, worship yeah, yeah. thing is the same in Canada as it is here in the United States. But like they... they yeah, I shouldn't have really gone after that guy for doing his job because rockets are good enough. Because he was like, that guy was in a convoy of people with, like, he wasn't by himself. He had, like, other guys with guns. But the one guy that That's... happened to get hit didn't have a gun. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so. It's been beaten three times since then. Damn. That was, uh. Confirmed kill, uh, not just shot. Two. But, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yep, confirmed. Um, it happened in, uh, a Brit. At 2,475 meters uh, in 2009, third. Second is 2012. Uh, it was an Aussie with a 12.7 millimeter. That's 50 cal. Yeah, 50 yeah, it's, cal. Yeah, it's 50 cal. Um, 28, 15 meters. And the longest one, is the name is withheld, but apparently it was May 26. I remember reading this. It was the McMillan Tactical 50, and the range was 35, 40 meters. That's Canadian. But They're the only ones who use yeah, the McMillan Tech 50. Canadian guy joint. <laughs> I know why his name is withheld. Yeah. Because <laughs> what we were just so, said. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so it's a Canadian. 700 meters over the next highest shot. Wow. Yeah, that's what I thought. That's like, because it was pretty recent. When you were saying 2001, I was yeah. like, I don't think that's right. Because I thought it was it was, more recent. No, it no, was, oh. it was I think it was Tora Bora. It was the spring of 02. Yeah. Okay. The first that, one the first was like, one that happened. was the record for yeah. a long time. Yeah. And yeah. then, yeah. Yep. But, yeah, this guy shot like, yeah, half point four miles. Yeah. Hathcock's shot was known um, for being. Yeah, but he used an M2 with a, with a modified optic. Yeah. So yeah, but I know that was like the like the, the standard. And then yeah, the, until the Afghan one yeah. was the big one. The that big was like, one that shit. was like leaps and bounds yep. ahead of that. Yeah. Yep. JF Joint Task Two. Joint Task Force Two. That's Canadian Special Forces. Yep. Um, yep. Mike B, you had notes. Is there any more notes? Yeah, Go I do. It. Um. So speaking of sh- not shitting where you eat. We'll get on the one of the main plots of this, but this kind of is this the evaporation it. pits? No, oh. no, no, no. This is where they're they're on a mission. They're like in this little I thing, and this. it's yeah. like hot. And the guy's like, "Oh, I, I gotta go shit. Like, I gotta fucking do it now." And then he just shits like five feet away from everyone else. I'm like, "A, you're the biggest piece of shit body fucker that's ever existed," <laughs> or B, you're just that stupid. Where you're like, oh, this is not going to pose a fucking hy- hygiene issue at all. This is not going to be a, a health and, and, and welfare issue at all if I'm shitting literally five feet from where we're supposed He's to be. It's not shitting up. into your food. They... It's fine. No. No, it's not. <laughs> I know it's and not. So, yeah. but, uh, and then he gets up. He doesn't wipe. No. Well, it's all the MREs. You get, you, you're not. Okay. You don't okay. have to wipe here, here's my... enough MREs. It's all compacted together. No. He, no, 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 no. Here's my point, like Devin. He comic. said he had to shit. He said he had to shit, and it was an emergency. Usually, it's not going to be exactly solid at that That's point, fair. right? So, if you if your ass explodes, right, your ass throws up <laughs> five feet away from your brethren, right? And you just sta- yeah. you just stand up casually. Your ass is going to be itching before you get your That's pants fair. buttoned. That's fair. You know what I yeah. mean? Like it's it's not it's going to oh, be the I've worst had in the sonic world. Diarrhea like, before in uniform, and it does suck, but like. Yeah, but but here's the thing: is you, you, you somehow get it somewhat cleaned up so it doesn't itch yeah, nearly. Yeah, you steal your that's buddy's gonna, pair of socks because you know it's coming. Like, 
Right. It's good. You're gonna. It's gonna eat your ass cheeks out from the inside <laughs> out. It definitely will. So. No, it will. Yeah, like, it will. You have, like you'll you shave like, real yeah. fucking bad. Yeah. So. Yeah, and it'll, it'll get infected because you got shit particles. Yep. You know, mixing it with that. It's like. It's like the inside out in Stranger Things. The shit it just, it just yeah. festers. Just it just festers. So, uh, well, I was gonna. I was gonna. On that note, then, uh, Devin, uh, since you were there, uh, do you have any uh, crazy shit stories? Uh, well, I mean, other than the giant fucking lake of human waste that's in the middle of the base that every base fucking has that. the yeah the evaporation pits where you're like li- we didn't have that well we had shit canals that got it away from well, us well it's not like right in the middle middle of the base but yeah it's part of the base still and it's these giant evaporation ponds where all of the human waste and like refuse goes because the, apparently nato is like you can't burn stuff anymore because it gives everyone who does it cancer so we're just gonna throw it all into a big hole um i'm glad you had that luxury yeah so we're all just gonna throw it into a big hole and so it was like full of water bottles and just shit and piss and like um all the like fraternize so fraternization is very frowned upon but there's a lot of used condoms in there a lot of those are probably the americans that were on the base they did a lot of gay stuff i walked in on a lot of gay stuff uh, yeah, a really? lot of gay stuff. There's, well, I mean, you can't put that many dudes together. I one thing, okay, one thing I will give <laughs> for historical accuracy, okay, like half the women <laughs> look like trolls that are in the military. Which what is you mean? Great. They all don't have neck tattoos? What? Oh, uh, but like, you know what I mean? Like, they're like the like yeah. three women, <laughs> other than the like love interest girl that you see in the like command post, are all fucking trolls. They're all like built like ogres and i'm like that's the kind of women that's in the military right there you know you speak for yourself bud but like i'm gonna refute this because um i don't know i i um never once had my dick sucked or pitched you know whoa brag about it uh with another with another dude in iraq and i was fine uh what's what clearly see so why would they be fucking in between porta shitters because that's probably the <laughs> this, one place this is the rabbit care. hole we get thrown down this this is well, it like, this is so it. if, this if is the you one get if you on. get see if you see them and you're just some random this is in the Canuck canadian porta shitter so the americans can go over there and not have well once the butt fuckery starts devin's that's in right. this, is I, how I, this is how i know this movie's bad is this is the all topic right that we're you going convinced right me now. i'm in no yes yeah, so, he just yeah, ripped off his mar why wasn't this it, in the movie like why wasn't this shown in the movie? michael the it's, next no, movie it's on the editing room floor make, unfortunately the next movie you want to make michael it can be all the gay sex scenes you want that i remember <laughs> rustolium so. beard and you know paul gross yep. just no listen ahead. listen i want to do an actual I want to do a real, a realistic version of this, and we'll call it "I peed, I on, peed this on this road." I did pee on that road. I actually, so like, you know yeah. that little sign that they hang up in the movie? That's still there. It's mm-hmm. like a shrine, and I literally mm-hmm. peed like on the base of that sign next to the road because I had to go. <laughs> on the pallet. So yeah, like the thing that it's like hyena road in air quotes. It's like sixteen kilometers, and it's like great. Uh, the Americans paved the other fucking eighty. So and fifteen point nine of them have not been pissed. Yeah, on that's fair. <laughs> but like, I had to go. So all right, I want to take a picture but, with the right. sign. Let's move on to another note really quick. Um, no gay so stuff. We're done with the gay stuff. Oh, we're Aww. done. You've 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 said plenty. Aww. We're good. I, we've got we got exercise no, the gayness. When face. we had Kristen and Sean on, it was like, wow, this is fascinating. I'm learning a lot. And Devin's on, and, I, and my face hurts from laughing. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> Devin's a fucking clown. I'm a clown. Um, but all right. So one of the scenes, the sniper scene, where he's completely covered by this camouflage. No, you, you'll know. Okay. Just let me finish there, <laughs> penis wrinkle. Um, so the sniper scene where he's covered by completely covered with the blanket. It's like tactical oh, as yeah. shit. Oh, I right. About that. Where he's got the suppressor and the muzzle sticking out of the front. Um, my question is, how in the fuck are you supposed to use your optics? With a blanket over them. More, more, more impressively, I want to say, the sound effect that hit that guy was. 
<laughs> yeah, it was like a reverse yeah, fart. Yeah. It, it was, was like a, yeah. it was like a fart getting sucked back up. And he in had like asshole. a football size chest. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and like, and the rifle also soaking. had no recoil, and it was really quiet, even though they're like clearly two hundred yards away if, if, from the shot. With a fucking twenty two suppressor yeah. on the end. With, of it. With, with, yeah, eight, yeah. You know 20, how big a fifty yeah. cal suppressor is? They're like eighteen oh, they're inches long, massive. and yeah. they're like four inches big around. Yeah, but so, e- but, but even but even with a silencer on, you'd have a crack. It's loud as fuck. You'd have a snap crack. Like, oh, yeah. Not, not oh, an yeah. inverse yeah. fart. Like, yeah. it's just, I mean, that's literally what it's like. A <laughs> like that. Yeah. Well, and also, was it, was it the same scene? I'm pretty sure it was where he got two guys within like a yeah. second using yeah. a bolt action yeah. 50 it's caliber rifle. Putting, it, it was when they were putting the gas. Yeah. The, 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 the gas the, underneath. The gas, the, Kerosene, yeah. mm. kerosene cans underneath the fucking yeah. culvert. So, so well, what the fuck is that gonna do? It's gonna make them hot. It's clearly filmed with the blue light, by the way, which is like nineteen fifty-six. <laughs> yeah, Jesus. very, very yeah. washed out. But like, yeah. that was just a question. I don't think I people understand like how long a fifty cal cartridge is. It's a hundred millimeters. It's ninety-nine. I know. Uh, it's a hundred fucking millimeters long. The case length is. Um, right, I've got one right the here. The fucking can look bolt at it. throw. It's like a sharpie. The bolt throw on a 50 cal mm-hmm. McMillan Tac sniper rifle is like five fucking inches long. All right, the fact that you're doing that in one second, getting a one second follow up shot on a rifle that Dude, big. So I'm pretty good at working a bolt. You've seen that in real life. You know that I'm pretty good. I could not fucking well, do that. Well, the McMillan Tac two, you can't work it that fast. It's literally I mean. a like, milled helical bolt. It's so precision yeah. machine, you can't just yank on it because you're going to wreck it. You know what I mean? Right. And that's the thing is, like, even if I were to do it with that, if I, if I were to just not give a shit about the machining and the $25,000 rifle, it's like, I cannot, I cannot make the, like, I, I know I'm sounding like, yeah, I qualified expert marksman <laughs> at Camp Ventura. Ripley when I was governor of Minnesota with the Carcano, that Italian piece of shit. You're not, I couldn't make the shot. It's like, no, that's not what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm saying I'm pretty proficient with a bolt action rifle, as a, a, like working it quick, getting a follow up shot, right? Even if I were to manhandle that fucker and, and, and fuck it up, right? There's no way I could hit those targets, especially at that distance. Even if it was 100 yeah. yards, there's no fucking way with a 50 caliber bolt action rifle that I could do that. And even the people which is a lot that I know who are way better shots than me with bolt guns. They couldn't do that either. That's bullshit. It's completely, yeah. it's completely it's a precision Hollywood. Rifle. It's, just... it's not a speed rifle. It's not designed to be exactly. fast. And like, it's a rifle where yep. you get confirmation for every shot you take. And it's, that's what yeah. it's designed See, for. So that would be kind of a neat thing to add in it though. Like maybe the guy who has it, like he doesn't, he doesn't think about that. And then he does wreck it. Maybe that, that yeah, been a just tries to, to yank the fucking bolt back as far as possible. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's fa- they're like, what the fuck is the matter with you? Like, that'd be a good thing. Well, to I can throw off the harmonics of well, that Michael, rifle. That involves conscious thought. That does involve plot. conscious thought. And that's what's lacking. <laughs> it's, you know? Yeah. It's, it, it, it's yeah. four plots yeah. shoved together. And, and, you know, the, the love interest thing, it really wasn't that bad, actually. You I can't fraternize. That's, that, so, so if she was pregnant, they would have court-martialed both of them. Oh, yeah, 100%. But, but they were on yeah, leave. Yeah, they're on leave, though. Uh, it doesn't matter. Martial. It doesn't matter if you're on leave. So, you're still active. You cannot fraternize. It's a thing. You can't do that. Like, But I they were never so... caught. Here's the thing. Let's just get let's get That's the fair. out of the way. You can do anything you they want. Never you can caught. do all the gay shit behind the porta potties you want if you're never caught. All right. Between. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 So while we're on this, so I was so dejected and like uninterested in this movie by the time we got to the point where she had the ultrasound. And then mm-hmm. the lady was like, ooh, I was like, what? Did they find the alien? Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. you know, <laughs> it was like, well, we do have it, to get it out it, of your chest. Yeah. 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 When, the, when they go and visit that and they're like, that when in this movie when they were mentioned like oh uh that guy doesn't exist here or whatever then they say he's the ghost i was like is this about is this gonna be like a paranormal war movie like right, the, I, right. I, I took i took that literally for a second i yeah. i i, I like, no, just spray painted i completely <laughs> yeah it, it look look anger aside because i will just let you guys behind the curtain here my wife sent me a text after my rant and said you're too fucking loud we all know you hate the movie shut the fuck up <laughs> Because apparently it's going through the vents. So that math does check well, out. Who gives a fuck? Checks out. All the people listening <laughs> right. give a fuck, Mike. All of our Tech, all Nate, of Nate. our beautiful 
No, Gay I'm saying, I'm saying, like, continue, listeners. continue ranting. Oh, yeah. Wait, did she? Can't you hear you or, or uh, Devin? No, 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 no. <laughs> she, no, she just yelling yeah. at me because I'm too loud because I was screaming. That's all. Um, I know. Well, I'm gonna get it later, by the way. But <laughs> so, so I live alone. So yeah. unless Kevin back there is gonna yell at me, which he better not. Um, I just realized there's a mannequin behind you. Yeah, Jesus it's Christ. Kevin. <laughs> Kevin. <laughs> um. So Jesus so like Christ. you know um. I I it, it we we've done a quite a bit of movies through this already, and I there have been a few movies that I've you know I've pulled my phone out. Um, uh, Come and see was one of them. Uh, uh, Shearshaw, just a couple of them, you know, just where it's like okay, I'm I'm lolling out, okay, like ugh. oh, dude, I I. <clears throat> It's. I was on my phone searching for War Two photo uh, cameras, mainly for the majority of the film. That's literally all I was doing, and 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 I still was able to digest the whole entire plot because I didn't need to watch it because it's garbage. <laughs> yeah, and it's, the plot is garbage. It's just. It's, terrible. it's just. You know, I feel bad because I feel like you know, actors put stuff into it. You know, they promise this thing. They think they got their performances captured well or the shot was set up well. And then it's not because either, you know, the cinematographer is crap, the editor is crap, whatever. You know, it's just it, it just sucks because, you know, people put time into this and it came out trash because the director is, you know, hello, mock. You know, it's just like I didn't that makes so much more sense that he's in his own. He's starring his own movie like like because, yeah. you know, it's just like, ugh, I don't know. He wanted to tell yeah. a story, but he had to fucking ham it up enough. To, yeah, yeah. To get people yeah. to watch it, and it's too fucking hammed up. It ruins it because there's there's so many other good stories you could have. God, and like, the combat is just yeah. trash too. That I watched the movie. Clearing scenes were just garbage. Just oh, yeah. But like, <laughs> and the fact that it doesn't look like Afghanistan like at all. I could never get past that. It looks like it's it looks like hey, isn't Kandahar flat? Because it's, it's, it's pretty plains. flat, yeah. Well, I mean, you get you do see the, the mountains, more but... west you go, the more mountainous it gets. But like, it's it's relatively flat, yeah. It's a lot of like farming fields, and it's a it's a big major province. It's the south, uh, uh, easternmost province of the fucking country, and the Hindu Kush mountains are all the way to the east, so you could see them. And but like, it's a very flat. It's a very poor. It's actually where the Taliban and like the Mujahideen started was in. Kandahar City, which is where Camp Nathan Smith was, which was the primary Canadian base in the whole war. And it's just bad. One of my notes is uh, it doesn't get better. It doesn't get better at all. It's so cheesy and so hemmed up. But, like, I watched it four times all the way. And I paid attention. Yeah, I watched it four times. Um, But, like, I, I stayed, I paid attention to, like, different quadrants of the screen each time I watched it. But, like, I watched all the little details. They got a lot of the little stuff right. Like, all the guns are actually Canadian guns. And all the uniforms are actually Canadian yep. uniforms. And all of the, like, yeah, the helmets the are actually... Like can- yeah, all the patches are correct. Like, they got all of the little stuff right, except nobody in the movie is ever wearing an actual Canadian pair of boots. What are they wearing? They're wearing American boots. Okay. And not even, like, American-issued boots. They're wearing, like, American off-the-shelf, like, side-zipper oh. fucking tag. Yeah, the Converse. Yeah. I, saw the, I saw the Converse side yeah. zips. Yeah, they're, they're yep. not yep. wearing, like, Canadian Forces boots. They're all wearing, uh, like, American fucking civilian boots. So, and But yeah. all the uniforms are correct. All the helmets are right. The body armor's right. The, the All of the rifles are correct, except for all the fucking suppressors they have. Suppressors are expensive, and Canada doesn't believe in them. Um... <laughs> I, I I have I because that that was one thing I actually wanted to ask you because I was rage blind, um. But like you know with with the gear and the guns and all that stuff, what I wanted to ask if it was correct that you have answered. And then the other thing I uh, the other thing I was going to ask was, you know, other than the combat, I I don't even think I can even ask this question because I think I already know the answer. Like the whole tactics are just out the window. So I don't even think they would follow the same kind of like what would be kind of like the protocol for engaging and, and all that other stuff. I mean, like, you know, we talked about, you know, guys having yeah. rifles and or ammo, you know, or probably, nope, um, you got to have a, a radio or a weapon, a radio or a weapon. So ammo doesn't count for that. Ammo does not count. 
That's why they tried that guy. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So okay. you, it has to be a radio or a weapon. And then later, there was a little while where they were like, cell phones were okay. Um, but not like cell phones, like taking a call. Like if you could figure if they were taking a picture with a cell phone. Or, like or, maybe. or would, would video recording be the same thing? Yes. Okay. You could, you could take take the shot and then eventually they went away with that because people can just video record whenever um you know what was that whole like nsa like turn the cell phone into a microphone so that is actually a thing that the u.s government mostly does with their own people um funny enough um they can because like a lot of the cell signal is beamed up to satellites through towers and everything like that and so they can monitor the signals coming off the towers with satellites, and they could actually track everyone's phone as long as it's on. Sometimes even if it's not on. And that's a thing that they have been able to do since the 80s. And so, like, the Taliban got around that because they would buy French SIM cards, like, in the thousands. And the French SIM cards were encoded different. And since the French didn't have any satellites in the area that could possibly do that, they were not able to pick up cell phone signals after a while. Like I said, the Taliban are very resourceful and incredibly fucking smart. So they they figured that out pretty quick, that if you got a bunch of French SIM cards, you could easily get around the U.S. like NSA spy type shit. But what about the Canadian one, though? <laughs> well, they used they called the U.S. for that phone call. So, like, all the guys in the oh sitting oh. in the thing, and they had all those multicam uniforms that said, you know, U.S. Army on them. That kind of gave it away. Oh, I didn't realize. Yeah, that, that kind of gave it away yeah. when they said U.S. Army. It was like on blue them. light, and I, I just yeah, it's it. all the computer but, screens. <laughs> like, but yeah, those were U.S. guys, yep. and the U.S. guys did a lot of the intelligence forming, which is probably why the Air Force killed so many people. Um, they didn't kill you. That's fair. They tried, tried, but. Uh, <laughs> But uh, no, it worked out in the end, and it, the U.S. handled a lot of the intelligence just because they were the largest force by far in all of Afghanistan. They were like 60% of the forces deployed were American, because um, America has a, just a hard-on for murdering people. So, <laughs> No argument yeah, there. <laughs> they I, just have a, a raging hard-on for killing people that are different than them. So, uh, did you work with any other coalition forces while you? Uh, were yes, here? a lot of the A and A guys, and a lot of them were worthless, to be honest. Um, the special forces <laughs> well, guys the... were really, really good at their jobs. The people that were like diehard patriots and genuinely wanted to make their country better, they fought really hard. They had unshakable morale. Like we're talking like Japanese nineteen forty two levels of morale here, like willing to die for their country for any reason type of morale and but like most of the na guys didn't give a shit and they would run or drop their guns at the first sign of like engagement well, or like combat the yeah. and everything so the, the police yeah like they i know they were very bad i hear from a lot of my friends yeah. that were over there the na army guys um, though were very hit or miss and they were very scared and a lot of times they would just hunker down immediately find cover and just sit there for the whole fight um they wouldn't ever shoot their guns they wouldn't do anything and you had to be like come on guy like you fucking like shoot your gun you know and they never would and yeah it was a, it was a big issue but uh, the special forces guys were real squared away i actually got a acquired uh an m65 a and a woodland camouflage jacket from a special forces colonel that he left hanging in the gym and after like three days i'm like i'm taking that if it's here three days from now and it was there <laughs> so i took it and i have it still so <laughs> Oh, that's cool. My buddy got me a set of that A and A uh, camouflage that, like, that Congress went ballistic over and like changed laws because of all the money that was spent. Oh, on but it actually was um, like what they picked. That's the thing. Like everyone thinks it's yeah. all this like bad stuff, but the A and A operates mostly at night, and that camouflage works. By the way, seventy percent of Afghanistan is considered temperate woodland. Yeah. It, <laughs> so, yeah. like in uh, Lone Survivor gets that pretty yeah. well. I think because it show, looks like, just like Colorado. The whole northern half of the country looks just mm -hmm. like Colorado. But, like, down in the south, the three big sparse provinces in the south, you know, like Helmand and Kandahar and stuff like that, that's where it doesn't work because it's too arid. And But that's where most of the fighting is, and that's where most of the casualties are coming from, and that's where all of the, like, news footage is coming from in Afghanistan. It's all these, like, mud huts and big fields, but meanwhile, you go to Kabul and they have skyscrapers and television and radio and, like, neon signs and, like, Lamborghinis and shit. 
you know, and they never show that. They only show the fucking mud huts way down in the poor fucking farm in South, you know, and it makes everyone think that it's this terrible rundown third world country. Kabul has like one of the best universities in the Middle East. And people are very highly educated, you know, and yeah nobody the west's perception is always <coughs> it's it's mm, it's funny because i mean because it pre what what you how you're describing kind of like the um the geographical terrain of, of afghanistan and we we know that from all of our studies but it's funny it's funny because like you say it and then you say that loud and then i think about it what i saw in that movie and it's like indiana jones three terrain yeah, it was because Indiana know, Jones three was also shot Jordan. Jordan. Yeah, so it's yeah, the same, so. yeah, so it's like that's why I was like, why? I, yeah, when they drive past the smolder in Indiana I, Jones, I, I honest, yeah, really I honestly, yeah. I honestly thought this was filmed in Nevada at first, or like no. you know, like some say, like <laughs> yeah, All the red rock, was, yeah. Mo- Monuments yeah, Valley. And then I did the research. I was like, oh no, it's in Jordan. I'm like, oh thank God. And yep, it's it, like, right off States. of a Canadian base in Jordan, where um, the- Joint Task Force and Operation Impact are taking place currently. Actually, so. right. I, well, it's funny because I mean, like I, the one thing I did like in the movie was using all the combat. F- it was weird with all the montage media stuff. It just seemed out of place, but I liked it as a whole because it was really, you know, actually showing probably combat footage off of a GoPro from Canadian forces within the area of real afghanistan so, at least so a lot of like. the like helicopter taking off stuff were like where it gets kind of grainy and shitty you know right yeah that that was all that's the actually jordan, taking right? pace off of the base in jordan right that's which, actual footage right, yeah right. but that's also not a combat zone no 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 i don't mean that <laughs> I, I don't mean those ones i mean like there's ones with like them like high-fiving kids all and stuff yeah that's actual real footage off. yeah yeah no that's what i'm saying i'm like saying like that that real footage seems like it's real footage in Afghanistan because you can tell the location has changed. So, yeah. so like that, that's what I'm trying to say is, is that yeah. footage actually comes from that. It's cool to see. It just, it's, it was so weirdly placed. Cause you never see that media character again. Like, why is it even there? Yep. Why is it in here? Yeah. It just, any sense. just again, it's four plots shoved into one, trying to make something work, but we've said it a million times. I mean, ugh, it's just, ugh. so and can we get back to shitting on this thing? One one quick tangent, but Go um, ahead. you had mentioned the uh, the Afghan special forces, yeah. And you know when they introduced this, because I had a friend that was in Kandahar for a year in fourteen fifteen uh, two five oh four, uh, basic and airborne, and so I knew a bit about Kandahar and stuff. And I remember last year, it's been just about a year since the country fell. Um, you know the whole like siege of Kandahar, where like all those SF guys were like, we're going to die. Yep. And they pulled back into what was left of CAF and they were like loading belts with ammunition. They were getting ready to like just fucking do it. And and as they were talking, because this film was made in 2015, you know, years before what happened. So it was just interesting to like see the juxtaposition of them talking about the huge base and everything. And then thinking about like the last five hours of like the sovereign nation of Afghanistan holding that from Yeah, power. a lot of those SF you know, guys, like, Kedahar got yeah. it way worse than Bastion did. And, and Bastion and um god what's the name of that big air air base that everything came in from i can't remember the name of it now bagram there you go um uh, bagram and yeah. bastion were like the last two forts to fell one of the first major bases to fell fall was nathan smith and caf in helmond hmm. and a lot of the a and a special forces guys that were really squared away got killed there um because that's where a lot of them were based because most of the most of the taliban operated out of the south of the country and so when Helmand got overrun, a lot of those guys died defending that base. So, wow. For, for me, I remember when J- uh, Jabad fell, a Jalalabad up in the north. Yeah. And I'm like, holy shit, that's where they launched the fucking Bin Laden. Yeah, Jalalabad's really, really close on. to, yeah, Kabul. So, yeah, it's, yep. And it's not that far away from, from uh, Pakistan, if I remember. Well, Jalalabad's in Pakistan. But, uh, so, it, it is, yeah. I thought it was northeast. It's right on the border. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it straddles it, but um, <coughs> crazy time. Yeah, it's, it was awful. Yes, we so. can go back to shooting on it. Yeah. All right, go back to shitting on it. All right. The whole war, so and, like the, the actual war, or the movie. No, 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 oh. no. This, this movie, this movie. Yes. Um, so the uh, main sniper guy that knocks that chick up, right? The warrant officer that knocks the uh, captain up. With the um, alien. It, it was, so Brian was it just me, or did he have a bit of a New York like gangster accent? I don't know what he, he had. He had, from he New had yeah. That's he all had I know. Some, it's from New Brunswick. It was so bad. <coughs> from New Brunswick. But they're portraying a Western Canada. New Brunswick is like the Bronx of Canada. Uh, uh, yeah, 
Um, but like they're portraying a Western Canada regiment that actually. What comes is the out Queens of, of Canada? That's fair. Uh, uh, Newfoundland. Um, but like, no, I can see. But that. yeah, I can see that. But like, but like they're portraying a regiment that wasn't even there at the time. Like I said, this was a French regiment in real life that did this. Hmm. Where's all their piss poor fucking frog accents? That's what I want to know. But like because th- Canadian, they put French Canadian accents are interesting. They're hor- heinous. They're hor- horrendous. And I'm sorry. Montreal's a great city. It is, but, but like <laughs> everyone that lives there can get bent. Um, but <laughs> well, it's just like there was one line that like the English yeah, versus the French. Yeah. <laughs> there was one line that like he was singing towards the end when I really started noticing this and nitpicking, and he's like, you know, you know, me and most of the time, I'm proud of what we're doing here. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't it's hear like, New York so, accent. But no, like this whole yeah. unit, the I heard unit like a that fake they're portraying accent. is from Vancouver, which is like the California the of Canada. Right. You know? So they don't sound like that. But that, <laughs> what that's what it sounded like. Sound like? It's, it sounds like people from Seattle. They're almost indistinguishable, yeah. Because so. huh. they're like Vancouver. 20 miles well, from Ro- here. Well, Rosef Suther- Sutherland, which is who it is, is from Vancouver, Canada. Yeah. So, well, he doesn't yeah. sound like he's from fucking Vancouver, Canada. Yeah. So, But, like, yeah, they, they yeah, speak. He, he definitely is, like, it's it's like a New York gangster wannabe He's hamming accent. it up. It's not good. Yeah. It, but But he literally says, if you guys... Can pull up a clip or some shit on your own time, which I know you won't do because you don't waste some more time on this. But like, it's he literally says, "You know me, and most of the time, I'm proud of what we're doing here." Literally said that. That's why I wrote this well, down. Yeah, we're here to kill and kids like, and take opium for painkillers. Right. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck? What the fuck are you, Brian? You didn't come through. You just muted yourself. That's smooth. Well, we have arrived at the last swap of my train going. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Would say. The, the toddler <laughs> yeah. speak. Yeah, yeah the, the toddler. I'm from the Bronx. I'm from the I, Bronx. I, I, I come from New Brunswick. I, I, New Brunswick. I, I want, I want to give some context because this is from an episode that we unfortunately have lost due to unfortunate circumstances. But uh, gay sex. Me being Listen, a fuckwit? Oh. You said it. I didn't. Yeah. Um, I'm endorsing it. Mike. It's because you're a coward. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm so scared. You gotta endorse it. You gotta um, endorse it. You gotta when, give it. When yeah. when we were doing uh, Sergeant York, um, there's ah, a, the, Sergeant the, York. there is uh, which we're gonna redo uh, soon. Uh, my, sorry, Mike, James. Yeah, sorry, James. Um, Mike, <laughs> Mike, a uh, then uh, proceed to make a hilarious interpretation of uh, of a character named Pusher who Pusha. was Pusha. from Brooklyn. <laughs> And, Pusha. Yeah. and I think you had said, Mike, a, that you, they his accent just sounds like a toddler. It does, yeah. He's like, that's what they and call then, me. The and then Pusha. we all started talking, yeah. and then we all just started <laughs> thought about it for a second. We all started going, oh no, why are we doing this? And then we started perfecting it more, and then we're like, oh yeah, no, it's just they all talk like toddlers. So you hear this, like, oh yeah, in the last like couple episodes, you'll hear it, and everyone's gonna be like, what the hell is this from? Why are they talking about something they haven't talked, even done something yeah. about? We we reference it in That's the past on we we reference the it in the past episode? yeah the lost episode we we reference it in the past with the last couple episodes and as I've been editing I've been realizing that we're saying it too much because the content is too gold so I felt like this is a good time to explain it but we will go back <laughs> oh rat in the subway took my pinky yeah yeah well what's the funniest yeah, thing exactly. about all this though is I live outside the New York City area and I'm in the city like probably a few times a month. And right after we had that, I had to go down to JFK at airport there. And, like, I started to hear people talking. And I'm like, fuck you, Ackerman. You're right. Fuck you. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I heard some of it. And I'm just like, wow. Yeah, to a certain oh, extent. Oh, yeah. I'm from you know, Astoria. Well, yeah. town like a, I'm going to go get well, a cab. You know? Not only that, but just, like, the pusher character was just annoying the yeah. hell out of me. Where he's like, he puts his thumb up next to his eye. And he's like, what are you doing that for? He's like, that gives me balance. <laughs> and it's like, what the fuck does you that retarded? mean? You retarded? Know, How did keep... you even get here? Are you retarded? Yeah. <laughs> How'd you pass an obstacle course? What the fuck? I got a on? letter in the mail, and it said to come to this army base. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. It's back to Mara's morons all over again. Anyway. All right. Well, 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 I'll try to keep on track. I got only got a couple more notes. Only a couple more, and they're just kind of shitting on this. One, we don't have to talk about it, but charging a 240, like the Canadians with the palm down. It's a C6, Obviously, these you. fuckers. Okay, um, uh, charging their 
cunt sixes. Yep. Um, <laughs> Gotta figure it out. There you so go. with the palm down like this, it's like, no, you charge Underhand, a fucking two yeah. C6 on uh, every machine gun. It doesn't matter what the fuck it is. A saw. A Why do you do that, four. Mike? Oh, uh, because you, you get, get more, more leverage, leverage yeah. and more strength. Well, there's and another it, reason too. Well, yeah, if you slip, it's not going to fucking, you're not going to fuck your hand up. Well, what's the oh. reason that you learned, Brian? Oh, well, the th what I was told was that, especially like, uh, like a 30 cal or something that doesn't have a disconnect for the charging handle, that if it was to have some kind of rupture or something and go forward or backwards, it would open your hand open. Meanwhile, if it's differently and it comes back, it rips your thumb off. That's what I was told. The one reason that you're told to do underhand with like a, like a 30 cal or it back might in the be day. that might be the lineage, yeah. but yeah, like that, yeah, that might be yeah. the lineage. The that C6 was the thing, and stuff like, doesn't have that though, so it doesn't matter, yeah. But if it, it doesn't have traditionally, if it didn't have a disconnected charging handle, you, but you do, you, you do get a, lot is, more, you get a lot more, you get a lot more leverage, leverage. you get a lot yeah, more no. weight behind it if you underhand yep. it. Yeah, I totally yep. agree, yeah. But yep. that was just what I was told, where that was like, one yeah, of the big and that, that could be a, that could be a fringe reason, yeah. but that's fine. Mm -hmm. Um, and so that was kind of funny, and you like to see them doing that. It's like, yeah, your weapons master on set was a fucking retard that's never been in the military. Um, anyway, and then I literally laughed out loud, I chuckled when they're like meeting up with you know the ghosts at the end. And they've got those like two ANA guys with them. And there's a fucking Ma Deuce on the back of this fucking pickup, this Toyota oh, pickup. Yeah. And it's laying Ford on its Ranger. side, right? On the mount or a Ford Ranger, whatever the fuck it was. <laughs> small truck. The mount is not visible, but like the M2 is like literally flipped on its side. And you can tell the extra is like, I gotta get try to get this back up. And he's trying to in the background. <laughs> And it's like, he just can't do it. Like, <laughs> Well, it's probably like an actual 50 cal, and it weighs like 60 fucking pounds, you know? 120 yeah. with the fucking barrel yeah. on there. I can't yeah. get it up. Yeah. Or no, 120 with the tripod, yeah. I think. So, yeah, it's like it's like 80 or 90 trying pounds. To flip that, 85 yeah, pounds trying to flip that fucker yeah. back up, you know, yeah. Yeah, but he, you could just tell he gives up because he kind of looks at the camera and looks away, and he's just like... Yeah, I can't do this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do see just, that. It just, that was yeah. fucking funny. And then, yeah, like... So the head falling off, like you notice when he gets his throat cut by that 50 cal round, right? It's like a tree falling. And in then the, the head, like there's one. There, yeah, <laughs> exactly. And it's like, dude. So, okay. If he did get hit in the neck, like straight on where it would, it would imply that there was a wound that severe to actually sever his head. His head would have been toast like, as long gone. as well as like yeah. a, a good chunk of his chest. Like his head would be over there. And it would have been done, and his head would have been in a million pieces. And so to do the whole, it's like, well, what about the spine? Was the spine severed? No, it wasn't. But hey, I guess a 50 cal, oh, just the shock wave of it going by you, no, it oh, fucking yeah. tear flesh off. No, it, <laughs> no, doesn't. it doesn't. That's that's a fucking fud lore piece of shit that's been disproven also, several times. Question for you guys: Did you notice that nobody ever like falls over when they're shot? They all just kneel down. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. Yeah. the first kill of the movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess. I guess that's you know, how people that's, die, right? They slowly kneel yeah, down, their head falls. They slowly kneel <laughs> down. Yeah, they don't. Yeah. They don't just go limp and, and, and slump down into a pile of nothing. They just it's not like kneel. a sack, dropping a sack of potatoes. That's right. Nothing right. like that at all. Anyway, that's all my notes, Bri. Bri. I, so, I, um, uh, real, real, uh, I go two. for it, Brian. I oh, I just, I just, I just remembered it. Um, Centurion had a budget of twelve million. So did this. What? Oh. So did this. This had really? a budget really? of 12, 12, 12. This make it I'd money? rather I watch Centurion. I will find that right now. Yeah, I, I would rather watch all yeah, four too, hours of Centurion. Cent Centurion. I'd rather watch two ice C picks. Cent Centurion eyeballs. had a budget of twelve million, I believe that's what it was. And I'll double check that. They made six back. Right. I'd rather re-enlist yeah, and watch and two made... Marines fuck behind a porta john for yep. free. <laughs> <laughs> Got guttural noises, I bet. Uh, guttural. Uh, 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 <laughs> um, twelve. Give me the hot lunch. Stand uh, on it. It's like a Mister. If just look up Mister Hands, and you'll get the same noise. <laughs> <laughs> um, twelve. Twelve um, million dollars with Centurion. Um, let me look up Hyena Road. Well, while you do what that, the I'll fuck have you been doing for the past thirty seconds? Yeah, so, I don't even think typing. the actual fucking project cost twelve billion dollars. <laughs> yeah, billion, twelve. That's a lot. Wow, I Centurion did. is twelve point one. What? Hyena Road is twelve point five. Wow, and okay. I'm looking up its more. profit. Wait, Canadian or USD? Uh, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Well, kind of, because like it's half. <laughs> okay, so even at eleven million, okay. Sure. 
It's, it's not just, half. Are you no, fucking with me? The Canadian dollar is like horse 80 cents me? on the dollar, yeah. No, Nate, I'm not going to ingratiate oh, you I with that. I used to go to Canada. It was deserved. awesome. Fucking like, give him 100 bucks, um, you get 150 back. Profit. Hurry I'm up. I'm working on it. Hurry I'm the one up. who edits. I, I'm Jamie. wasting my Jamie. time, okay? Not your Jamie. time. The frogs are gay. Hurry Jamie, up. Jamie, look it up. <laughs> what time is it? No, it's the it's the hour. <laughs> I'm telling you, look it up. <laughs> oh, his his eyes just hurry got wide. Hurry up. All right, so how much He's is this discovering? Make? How much Canadian money did they get? How many How many loonies and toonies did they pocket? <laughs> can't be right. That can't be right. What do you mean? Hurry the fuck up and tell us. I'm trying to read it so I don't give you the wrong information. Money. I just read the numbers. Total the domestic box office was $1,430. Domestic box office for theater performance was one thousand four hundred and thirty dollars. Well, yeah, domestic, no, I think it only got showed twice saying. at like domestic, film festivals, and then went right to Netflix. Yeah, because I think it only made, I think it only went to um, uh, film festivals and won some awards. And yeah. the home market performance is its estimated domestic DVD sales was one hundred and seventy eight thousand one hundred and seventy six. Who would want to own a DVD of this? Yeah. Like, who's, who's some who's dad still making DVDs? Yeah. Well, put it next to Wind Talkers, yeah. you know? So you're, yeah. you're telling me they spent 12 and a half million bucks and on this. And they made 105 grand. 170. <laughs> 179. <laughs> 500. No, $606. Can you believe that this thing's got oh. like three and a half? That's terrible. This thing has like three and a half stars. Paul Gross is going to be paying back this loan forever. <laughs> well, I mean, there's gross. a reason why he hasn't made another movie, I guess. So. I mean, it, it's it's off of the numbers. I don't know if it's true. Can but... you imagine that conversation with his wife if he's actually married? Can you imagine that? Like, I am or. We're fucked. We're fucked. Everything's fucked. That's right. Uh, All I wanted to do was show Canada Paul and Afghanistan. They should have they no, just had a picture God. of me with a red, white, and blue ribbon cigarette hanging out of my Pissing mouth. Pissing on, a, Pissing on, on road. that road sign. He's been married. He's been I just married since at, 1988. It's so not divorced now. So there you go. So you know, I just looked him up too. He's only written. That was the last film he wrote and directed. He's only acted <laughs> since. We'll be the last two. <laughs> I wonder the why. Wonder why. Yeah. That's weird, here, right? Here's the real question. So what did Reveille cost? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, do we no, want to divulge that? Um, no, no. It was we'll do it definitely we'll do it very later. Very later. Definitely yeah. less than a million, but yeah. we're in the single digits. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, uh, it, it cost uh, it cost less than what they made. We'll put it that way. And it also, didn't cost me my morality. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. I mean, you say that, but you didn't get to participate in any of the gay stuff that happened before. Well, I didn't end up in Waffle House like someone, you know. Now, hey, I did Ooh. end up in the Waffle House. That's fair. I just, mm. I, I, we were too hard getting Calvin I, on Tinder. I, I, I'm <laughs> just, yeah, we did. We made him a Tinder. We got him on online. I like nice ladies. That's right. <laughs> anyway, uh, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just I, still I in like shock. Them, There's nice. a reason why my face, my eyes went so wide. I mean, my God, I. I that is the worst. That's one of the I worst returns know. I've ever heard. Well, see, but here, here's the thing, though, dude. It's like it says that, but then I have the global. And mail says it brought in four hundred and eighty-six thousand dollars, but that's I mean, still, still, still out of twelve and all half, together, it's still uh, shit. It's like half a million dollars. Centurion made half its money back. That it. That's almost as bad yeah. as a United. Pr Passions. Prasad oh. estimated oh, yeah. Hyena Road would finish its theatrical run with one point five million dollars. Uh, Gross's Gross's previous war movie. Passion Dale, pa Passion Dale, Passion Dale earned you did four point four million dollars oh, at the box oh, office. God. Oh, that's on our fucking God. list. It's on our so fucking bad. list. So bad. No. It's this so terrible. This makes so much sense. Oh, this makes it, so it much all sense adds now. Up now. I'm... Oh, it's like well, it's, it's funny. Like you have all those strings on a board, and finally yeah. you can Pepe take a piece of rope and go. Wow, this is this, this is, this is the it. Common denominator. That was the. That was the. Uh, I just looked up his philosophy. That's the only other film he's written, produced. They're both directed. horrible. Oh fuck! They're both so don't bad. Don't tell me. Well, and don't I tell me that's to... next week. I might have an aneurysm. I might die. No, because well, because we're here. Don't say that. Because we're here. Um, <laughs> what do you call it? Uh, I actually wanted to bring this up. 
because I was looking into other Canadian war movies and like I would I would like to see more topics or more films about Canada's military. We don't have know? that because we don't like, have the really... hero worship that America has. We but, don't have the blind but... patriotism or the fucking people. True, but there's a lot of countries that like Vietnam, for example, like there's Yeah, we won that. We backed movies the about like Kong. the NVA and everything. Like <laughs> But um <laughs> what do you call it? I, this, I looked it up and like there's only really bad Canadian war films. Yeah. Like uh, there's this one. There's Passchendaele, which is he's fucking made it's by the same guy. Yeah, yeah. It's horrible. Um, the also Forgotten starring. Battle. Yeah, it's a travesty because Canada, like even in yeah. this instance, has stepped up in every single major conflict in the world since like the Napoleonic Wars. And yep. Yeah. Have you seen Juno? <laughs> I have has seen. Anybody Juno. here seen Juno? Do you? I haven't seen it. I hear it's good. Um, I, that might be the best Canadian war movie. Oh, it's not. See, you oh, said you're not, you're not yeah, I, was, I was Cohen about to thing? say. Are yeah, you talking say, about? Are you talking about? Yeah, um, are you talking about the? No, it's uh, about. <laughs> sorry. Okay, I, should, I, should, I, should, I was like, yes, I have movie. seen Juno. Yeah. What does that have to do with yeah, what we're no, talking about? Yeah, it's not about some fucking. It's not some fucking <laughs> pregnant <laughs> chick. The no, Ellen Page movie. Yes, goddamn it, Mister Page. Yeah. Um. No, it's Elliot. It's Elliot. It's a film. But what I want to say is that so Juno is this movie that came out like ten years ago, and it's about Canadian soldiers training for Juno, and it's con- the, the invasion of Normandy in Juno Beach. And it, I hear it's very much like a uh, Gallipoli, where like the whole movie they're like getting ready and they're gonna go, and they and the last ten minutes is the of them landing on the beach. Um, and I've heard good things about it. I just haven't had a chance to watch I, it. I as mean, as far as I can I tell, should... that's the best Canadian war film. We like, don't know that. We haven't. The watched other it. ones are shit. Well, we don't, but I've seen The Forgotten Battle, and I really don't like it. Fair. For different reasons. Um, you know, like, hey, I just escaped getting shot. Tangent. I just escaped getting shot out of a fucking plane a week in the swamps. I got back to the Canadian lines or friendly lines. I'm totally going to get out of my wet uniform and put one of their uniforms on and go back. Like, no, you're going to fucking England. Yeah. <laughs> That's just a horrible movie. It's but yeah, so we'll have to check out Juno. But yeah, Passion Jail's a piece of fucking shit. People got to do more for Which, Canada. It was on. It was on our. It was on. It, no, it was on our list, and we're gonna do it still. But we're now this may Canadian. <laughs> yeah, and a World War One yeah, historian we'll, expert. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We're, we're going to. Uh, we're gonna have fun with that one. We'll have Devin back for that. We were gonna have you on that initially, and then uh, uh, I think Brian or Nate found this one, and they're yeah, like, I "Yeah, found we should." This one, yeah. Yeah, I found right, the right. other Sorry, Paul Gross, I, movie. Yeah, Paul Gross but, movie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's fucking yeah, it was, gross. It's really it's gross. Fu- it's funny that yeah. we drew that connection now and Classic like we got gross. it figured out because it's like it makes sense. Yeah, that that make that explains so fucking much yeah. about how both these films were just epic so heaps of burning up. dog shit. <laughs> yeah. It just I've terrible. never seen Passchendaele, so this will be fun. Oh, oh. No. it's like this, it's but so World bad. War One. <sighs> And worse. Yeah. Well, no. Oh, it's worse. worse. It's worse. Yeah, they got a lot wrong um, in that fucking. <laughs> this was this was at best a polished turd yeah. compared to fucking Passion That's Day. right. Like, I mean, in the end, you could you could polish a piece. You could polish a turd, but in the end, it's still right, a piece right, of shit. Yeah, you yeah. know. So it's not saying much, but it's you, you'll see when you see Passion Day. You're going to be like, oh, fuck. It's this. Great. I'll have to get my Ross out for that, my it, spelly, and it, my trench won, cap on. It won Best Sound Editing in the Canadian Screen Awards. Well, I mean, to be fair, well, there's like five movies made in the whole fucking country made for by Canadians. the Canadian. whole dance party scene? Yeah, the dance party. Here, here comes the shot. <laughs> How many times did you dance with A&A soldiers in the middle of a field behind Dakota, Toyota Tacomas? Uh, and was this before or after the whole Marine Ford Corps Rangers, shooter for one. encounter? They're all Ford Rangers. Oh, sorry. I mean, they would be Toyotas in real life, but they'd be Hiluxes. And, uh, but no, it's all Ford Rangers because that's what Canada sent over there. Because it turns out our fucking G-Wagons, which is like the Canadian Humvee, they use the G-Wagons, the Mercedes oh, the G-Wagon. Whole beh- on the back of the truck scene just showed up on a screenshot. <laughs> oh, my God. It's the way to go. <laughs> but, like, I, I, have def- I have no self-respect, though, so I danced a lot all the time because i have no <laughs> well, self-respect i did a lot of stuff because i have no self-respect just because it was funny and it made other people laugh well that's uh, like okay the, the scene in the movie if we're going to go back to the movie that that i think that was the scene when when they're out there standing in the middle of nothing and then all of a sudden wild uh was it called wild cherry i think does that that song uh play that funky yeah. music oh. um starts oh. started playing I would have been dancing. and it's like they're dancing to it and the music is like building up i'm like what is I would have been dancing. Like, what is it's this comedic movie? relief like, right before is... the J Dam? Yeah. 
we, it's, it, we don't need it's it. Comedic release. <laughs> But there hasn't That's, been anything serious see, in the movie. This is why we so gotta far. watch Jarhead, because it's the most realistic movie ever. It's a guy jacking yeah. off in a porta potty and being pissed off at the world. We'll get That's to that. That's the yep. best so, that is the film. best sound editing in a movie. I don't care what anyone says. You can hear it. It's perfect. The jacking off yeah. in a porta potty? Yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can hear the skin chafing with no lube. <laughs> Yeah, just you ever jack off in 116 degree? Yes, I have actually. Yes, <laughs> yes, I have. I'm glad I don't to have be that. Fair, marriage, scientifically, the yeah. heat makes it more intense. <laughs> oh god! <laughs> I don't know about that. No, it does. But, like yeah, statistically, it's... like it's supposedly better if the hot. Why? Because you're fighting your dehydration levels. No, I mean that's also true. Like, you know... Yeah, but like that sounds a little bit a little bit incorrect no 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 google it seriously the hotter it is the like better it's google supposed it. to be i guess so <laughs> so google it do canadians only like get off in saunas though? i mean like you know sometimes also yes i've done that before but <laughs> well, it wouldn't surprise me you know hey there put that ladle on the rocks <laughs> right, put that ladle on the rocks yep <laughs> You betcha, bud. This seat's a little. This bench is a little slippery today. I don't know what's going on. Oh, Usually I the water it. evaporates. Slipping out of there, you know. Don't look. Low. Don't make any eye contact, oh, or it's gay there, pal. <laughs> 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 Gonna meet you out the back by the Porta John right. later, you know. Yeah, what are you doing later, <laughs> bud? Yeah. <laughs> About one to five a.m. What do you do? I found a real a sweet a spot out there behind the Porta Johns, right there in the corner of the piss pipes. If you wanna, you know. Yeah. You know, I've heard it's a good place to rip a dart at and then, uh, you know, do some yeah, other things, you know. Yeah, rip a lung dart, you know. And, uh, <laughs> Jesus yeah. take, take the dirt road home, if you know what I mean. Yeah, when, that the river, nice when the river runs the, red. The uh, evaporation pond. That's right. Oh, it really adds Get that nice road, shit you know. in the air smell, you know. Mike is just, like, checking his phone. He's just like, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, dude. I'm, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm multitasking. I, I don't I'm blame, enjoying I don't the, blame the, you the through that rabbit hole right there, so that's fine. So, <laughs> there was one time I where we did push a guy into the evaporation pond for the sheer fun of it. <laughs> Was he Marine? No, no, no. That was a Canadian guy. He was kind of a dick. I would have literally hunted you down and murdered you. I didn't very push slowly. him. I was just part of the group that laughed at him. <laughs> what do you do to get pushed uh, in? All right. Hold on. So, well, the thing about raw human sewage is you're not more buoyant than human sewage. So you fucking sink real fast <laughs> for one. And for two, this guy couldn't swim, like, at all. <laughs> so. We pushed him into like knee deep section, and he just wham. So he just like, said, he just said, we, mouth, he just said, I didn't do yeah, it. Yeah, open mouth, yeah. like cursing our existence, wham into like shit, and then yeah. just. And, and so I quote, Devin just literally said, "Oh, I didn't push him, but I was one laughing at him." And he just is now saying, "Well, we and we." Yeah, and it was we. a group of like sixteen guys. Yeah, herd mentality. Time. There we go. All right. Yeah. Uh, I have one more thing to say before we go and talk about the weapons one last time. Um, so one thing I did like as well was I thought the Taliban looked good. They didn't act good, but I, they did look like Afghans in a way, because like a lot of times it's like they all wear black and stuff, and they did do that like later on, but. I did really like in the first the human way firefight, which is shitty. I liked how they were dressed. I thought that was very correct. It, you know, it, again, um, it goes down to I think key aspects of this movie's of this movie got it right, and then key aspects of this movie got it wrong. And it's like whoever was in charge of the Taliban extras, yeah, who, he, yep, yeah, who, that's who, more who silver seen. spray paint in the beard next time. Yeah, <laughs> they might have yeah. ran out of it. You know, <laughs> that was bad. No, 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 that, that, was no that, that, that was that was that was bad, but. But but in terms of like you know the costume design the uniforms you know the, everything all pajamas? the way through yeah I mean yeah you can get pajamas <laughs> wrong I mean dude we I I've seen I've pajamas. seen Afghans in movies portrayed as Afghans that don't look like Afghans no those those are very accurate they wear that yeah all that stuff so quite like, a lot so, there yeah so so my so my point is it's like you know the costume department. Good. You said the uniforms right. were good. Yeah. You said the equipment was good. That's good. The well, yeah, department... because all of the extras were yeah. actually on a Canadian military base in Jordan with actual Canadian shit. Like, being it's Canadian like the soldiers. They hire. It's like, what? it's like, it's like, it's like. Also, it's like, it's like, how much money was was like? I don't know. No, not wasted. Um, squandered, wasted. Hookers but, and blow. I hope it. No. I hope all that budget was for hookers and blow. About twelve point three million I, I was wasted. Feel, by I our feel like this movie was just a, mo- a money laundering scheme, just to like yeah. you know, yeah. 
going to uh all going to uh to paul gross's steroids why is it a yeah. giant pyramid <laughs> it's turned yeah. upside down yeah. anyway sorry to derail you brian but like i i just wanted like like again like it's, no worries. it's parts of this film part key components of the film not parts of the film most almost all the film was awful sure. and i never want to watch storytelling it again. was awful yeah but like but like part certain key components of making a film were good unfortunately the key components that make the film watchable were bad yeah. So, I am FTB. Yeah. All the cool guns. Yeah, all the they the got cool all the Canadian guns right. US guns. So we we actually have an I I am FTB to go to this week. Unlike some of the previous weeks. We yeah. Oh, they got the McMillan Tac Fifty. They got the Prairie Gunworks. They got C eight, the C sevens, the Browning High Power, the C uh, the C eight SFW, which is just a C eight but with a quad rail in the front. Hey, hey, Devin, who gives a fuck? Um, Canadians. Also, by yeah. the way, the Canadian C8 and C7 was adopted by a lot of other countries um, because it's the best M4 you could possibly buy. Mm-hmm. So, like, I hear good things Norway about Special Forces, Denmark Special Forces, French Special Forces, and British Special the Forces. The dumb shit that Can- use, Canadians have to brag about. Use That's a C8 because they're the best. Well, what else did the brag about? The Browning like, High Power, hell yeah! <laughs> That's what he has to that, brag about. Look at that shout out, fifty uh, year old piece of shit. <laughs> Proct of the Oh, time. they're holding hands, oh, court martial. Happy couple. Court martial. They're touching. The McMillan Tag yeah, like the There it is. That was cool. mm-hmm. Look at that beast, and it's fucking. And that stock is collapsible, or does it screw off? Or something? Uh, no, yeah. it's got a buffer pad in it. Oh, oh, interesting, huh? It worked really well because there was no recoil. Well, they, it, the thing <laughs> is, like, scarily nice to shoot. It, yeah, I've seen it before with the whole, like you said, um, like milled bolt. It and, is the like uh, probably the or... the best made precision sniping fifty cal in the world. Yeah, well, it, look at the top ten kills for longest range, and yeah, you're hundred percent right. Yeah. Because at least four or five of them are. There's the Prairie Gunworks Coyote, which is I think 308. The Timberwolf is the 338. Hmm. Yeah, that's a Canadian standard sniper rifle. Why is the barrel? It's fluted to reduce weight. So. Oh, okay. It's interesting how it's in the middle. Hmm. Well, they're usually whole length. It kind of fades. It's deeper towards the chamber and fades out towards the Hmm. muzzle. That's all free floating, right? Yes, it's entirely free floated barrel. Yeah. You could buy a Prairie Gunworks uh, Timberwolf for, I think, $20,000. Wow. Also, I fucking the hated this because they're like yeah. sniping in yeah. the sun. Yeah. Sniping. They're like 250 way meters out in, in the front open. of the edge. Way out in the open, yeah. silhouette on yeah. top, of a, a top of a point. So you're yeah. silhouetted on top, on the edge, shooting down while they're all watching you. They could And that suppressor's not big enough. And they could have just picked you off while you were trying to do your science experiment with incendiary <laughs> rounds. Like, oh, my God. The C three A one, the Parker Hale, which oh. is a Winchester M seventy. So um, yeah, oh, that was in the combat footage, not even in the yep. film. That's funny. Mm-hmm. So I like that they got a lot of the gear too, because Canada's gear it turns out it sucks. So they bought a lot of stuff off the shelf. So you see a lot of guys using so, like Coyote Brown gear, like all these guys are wearing. That's all off the shelf bought. Because Canadian gear it turned out it wasn't like adequate enough, so they would buy shit off the shelf. And Canada has a nasty habit of that going all the way back to like the Korean War of just buying civilian shit off the shelf to solve their needs. So there's the C7, which is a M16 A3. I like those. It's an M16 A3 yeah. with the green furniture. And then they got the. By the way, all the scopes on here are Elcan um, 145s, but I think it's the one that's different. It's got like the different reticle. It's like the C79 or something like that. Yeah, I saw the LKN. Now, it's been a long time since I've looked through one. Um, I remember a friend bought one like when they just came out, like 07, 08 or something stupid like that. But, no, they came out uh, a long time. LKN has been really? making scopes oh. since like the 90s, yeah. Well, since I mean, this, like, like this model, though, I mean, like, yeah. or I could be totally wrong, too, but like the, with the, the, it looks just like this, but it was like 15 years ago. So it It's probably a 145 then, because I think the. They're very yeah, expensive. They're incredibly expensive, yeah. but they're some of the best but, optics in the world, so. Is the reticle yeah. right for the scope in the film? So different? you never see the reticle for the M4s and stuff. You only see it no, for okay. the snipers. 
Um, but like yep. the reticle is different based on the models. All the magnification is the same. Mm-hmm. The C one four five series of scopes come with a bunch of different models. C one four five is a machine gun optic, actually. The U.S. buys mm-hmm. a lot of them. Yeah. Um, so it's got like all the elevation adjustment marks in it, and like there's mm-hmm. sim- it's just lines. yeah, there's simplified versions that don't have as much stuff, and it's a different model. Hmm. So yeah, I've used those quite a bit, and they're just lines, but they're actually pretty easy to yeah. use. Yeah. Morse. I like the classical stock too with the full length. Barrel. Yeah, the the yep. C seven. Yeah. Was that your issue rifle? I or? used the C seven A three. Yep. Oh, cool. So the C yeah the C seven A two is an M sixteen A three. Yeah, and then here's the the C eight which is uh, just an M four but it has a quad rail. The C eight SFW is an M four with a quad rail, and the C eight is an M four with just the regular green plastic handguard. So, like, you see these guys, they're not actually in, like, this scene below here in the truck. They're not actually using the C8 SFWs. They're using regular C8s because it doesn't have the quad rail on it. Hmm. Yeah. It's got, like, mini rail at the front. for. Well, you could put that on the C7 and thing. stuff, too, because it's part of the um, gas plug. Oh, interesting. Oh God! The, oh God! I forgot. I blacked out so much. The montage. The montage. Oh. That's seen. Yeah, I also had in my notes. Can you cock your fucking guns enough? Well, you gotta run all that lube through, Mike. Come on now. <laughs> well, yeah, but that's not uh, what they were doing. Get they were just, there's, there's, yeah. there's so many little things in this film. Well, he's got a PEQ. Oh, that's a folding. Yeah, he's got a Peck 15. He's got the folding foregrip. He's got the 22 suppressor. He's got the. Elcan scope. He's got the neck taps yep. too. There you go. Yeah, he's yeah. got his M4 that did weigh like six pounds and now weighs. He still has his nose. In yeah, his still shot. weighs fifteen pounds now because all the shit on it. They they would have had pec twos at this point, right? This is the, well. So yes. when this well, actually when was it based, Mike? This Nobody actually knows. took this movie's based off of 2010 to 2011. Is when the High Unit would Project would have then. would have happened. So yeah, they would have had pec yeah. twos for these SF guys. Like they would have had pec twos very much smaller and lighter but hey dude i i want i wanted to like this film i did i, I wanted to like it it's just oh <laughs> it's good look at it look at all those 22 suppressors on those m4s i i love the part when his legs pop yeah off. yeah and he just yeah. like flies into the wall like and then he's like i'm head. gonna crawl yeah. into the building the, the, see that cg yeah. wasn't too bad though the, the lieutenant dan no legs effect like that actually wasn't that bad it's just, it's just, it's just, you ain't got no ain't legs, got no legs. Dan. Yeah, I know, Forrest. I didn't know he was See, a pilot. See, there's the actual C8 SFW because he's got the quad rail on it. Right, and he never uses his fucking 203 when there's that? a billion times where he definitely that should have. That is the Elkan Spectre DR, which is a one to four uh, time mm. zoom optic where the regular Elkan scope is three time zoom. Hmm. So... The AKM, the classic gun that all the Taliban use. Now, did you did you run into all Soviet AKs, or did you run so, into Chinese AKs? Uh, no, they're pretty much all Soviet AKs, and okay. um, a lot of them are AKMs, or you would get AKM S's with the folding stock. So, so, mm, yeah. so like it's funny because because Chris had said that he ran mainly into Chinese AKs. Well, yeah, that would be in the north that would be too, right? yeah. Or? So where they're coming in, um, you could get a lot more variants in the north I especially figured, like yeah. up the hills too um so like you would see hear stories about guys up in the hills finding martini henry's yeah and uh smle's and um you could see people with mosins and stuff still up in the north um but more down in the south like where they were much more organized and everything was more kind of solidified right it was pretty much akms the occasional ak-74 Mm-hmm. Um, but not not much more branching out of the the standard like AK platform. Pretty much everything was Russian. Okay, so that's I, that's very. Interesting. I wanted to say this in the outpost episode, but because Chris was just you know just recalling everything, I was wasn't the right time. But does anybody here know why the Tal or the Mujahideen used Martini Henrys in the Soviet Afghan War? Because they, they had, had them. them. No, there's a specific reason. They didn't have any anti-aircraft abilities before they got stingers and blowpipes from the Brits and the Americans. So what they would do is, is that they would take the 455, the fucking huge round the Martini Henry would shoot, and they would shoot into the hind um, r- rotors, the blades. And what happens is, is that when that round smacks into the rotor blade, it starts to fracture it. And when you hit it enough times, the pilot 
is having a really a really hard time fucking holding the helicopter and you know like flying it and stuff so they would return the base so it was a very simple form of get the fucking helicopter out of here they would shoot the blades yeah with you'd the see giselles and stuff like that too which are like flintlocks yeah giselles you know mm-hmm. flintlock muskets mm-hmm. and stuff that are afghan made there's a lot of afghan made weapons that they would use quite often all but dazzle yep all but dazzle. some of them weren't but like yeah but like for my guns some of them were made for the u.s or the sorry the like you know the gun yeah. market the akms there it is i love that i love the underfold i don't they it's suck. pretty funny they're like, not it, comfortable to shoot it, it, no <laughs> they're not, not but they, they look, look cool <laughs> yeah no it's funny because like i, I like Iraq, you fold the stock and you put the front of it on the front of the mag so. i'd rather just yeah, have in iraq the like they they had they had the folding stock but they were most of the iraqis were carrying the romanian ak's Mm. Hmm. Yeah, the second most thing With that we grip, right? we or... would hear about um, in Afghanistan was Hungarian AKs. Yeah, the AMD sixty five. AMD sixty five. Yeah. yeah. The sixty three and sixty five. Yeah. yeah. Yep. They show yeah. up in, Af- in Vietnam too. Oh yeah, they're everywhere. Unknown AK carbine. Then they're talking about That's this guy. A crink. Yeah. It's a it's a crank, yeah, but a... it's using metal mags. Crank. That that. Yeah, seventy four K. Well, no, that's that's not a seventy four. The mag is a no, forty seven. Well, but, but it's the supposed break to be. It's supposed look at the break. Yeah, the but break you can put it, you like can put that break on anything and get a. Oh no, I know. Yeah, it's an yeah. amalgamation. Up there, shit, but... and then we get to the. It's also a forty round mag. It looks like too. Big well, one. also seventy fours don't have a chrome line or a chrome plated fucking bolt. bolt yeah. So ah, yep, yep. The AMD sixty five. There it is. Say. Yep, there we go. It's an awful looking fucking thing. <laughs> oh fuck you! What do you mean fuck me? That that looks like a. That that's terrible. Fuck you. Go fucking take your mats and just shove it up your ass. That fucking thing what? is beautiful. You think that's beautiful? That thing's gorgeous. That's a. That, it's like an ugly yes. duckling. It's gonna Fuck. grow up to be a swan. It Shut looks up. like a turd. Shut up. Dude, Mike B. That's please like one of tell me AKs. I'm not in the minority here. You are. Are you? You that all that think thing, that looks cool, dude? That thing's a gorgeous yeah. rifle right that's, there. Look at that that's thing. One of the that cool, is the, dude, the, the muzzle brake. Fucking guys use that. The muzzle brake. Yeah, the, the muzzle brake, so cool. the handling. That's the epitome the, 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 of function over fashion uh, right there. Correct. I, yeah. No. The this pinnacle is garbage. of Cold War AKs. This is garbage. Is stack. Whether, whether it's functional, well, it looks like garbage. This looks A note like to the audience. Awful. The man from Maryland is talking and just don't disregard his comments. It doesn't matter. So if we sprinkled some old bay on that bitch, would you change no, your I'd mind? No, I'd throw it off the cliff and i take the older one. Fucking doubt it. Oh, you take the AMD sixty three, which is just that with a fixed stock. Yes. Uh, so that, that that's your real beef is the fucking the folding the wire, wire stock. That's your yeah. real the side folding wire, wire, wire stock. really stocks are terrible. I'd rather have the fucking side folding wire stock than the underfolding razor sharp piece of shit on the AKMS. <laughs> I'd rather take so. the AK AKMS than that. And this thing's got a front foregrip and a fucking hefty muzzle brake. It's probably much an more angled, an angled yeah. front foregrip though. Like this is like the look. If I want, look, if I want to get era. laid, I take the I think get, get the AKMS, and I wouldn't grab that. Yeah, it, what you're gonna lay yourself? Go ahead, yes, I will. Down, Nate, go ahead and scroll down. We're not, we're not, we're not we're, talking about we're a doing fucking jarhead you know, sound party with you. Portion. Okay, that's what we're gonna be doing. Go snort some old bay. Okay, let's go. <laughs> no, like, like that's fine. That looks fine. That's I, an AMD oh, 65. So from the front, yeah, it's okay. Because that but, looks you know. fine. It's uh, it's it's it fucking might, might, barrel might looks be it nailed it on the it's, head. It's, 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 it's the just the angle of the muzzle yeah. brake. Yeah, it's the might angle. Be nailed it on the head. I don't like the wire stocks. I don't like them at all. They're garbage. Nobody cares about that. They're, That's the worst machine gun ever made. Fuck it. <laughs> yeah, the M2 <laughs> heavy barrel. Yeah, it's a piece yeah. of shit. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, hold on. You gotta give it. You gotta hold on for one second because Chris will freak. Chris and Mike. Chris and Mike. I just got finished editing that episode. Chris and Mike are just like all oh, the M two. Ah ah ah. No, literally the M2's one awful. of the. It, it could be, it's amazing. It's not a two forty, so it can get bent. No, it's 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 the it's, most. It's yeah. Like, okay. Best. All right. I'll say the M two A one with the fucking quick change barrel is good. That fucker sucks. That's because you're too big of a lazy piece of shit to figure out a headspace. No, no, no. I would rather just crank a handle once and pull the fucking barrel off and instead of having to do a hot ass barrel change with fucking asbestos glove and unthreading this fucking white hot barrel for half a fucking hour. Not that hard. It, it, yeah, but it's it definitely it. not as easy as rotating a barrel 45 degrees and throwing the fucker off the gun. 
It's like old school. I, or I disagree. School. I side with Mike B on this. <laughs> oh, fuck you guys. The, the quick you're just, you're just a lazy, a lazy am, fucking impatient piece of shit. But you know what? I'm shit. getting shot at. I want the machine gun to work, all right? So fucking change the barrel in 15 seconds. But are you getting shot at by Taliban or are you getting shot at by the U.S. Air <laughs> Force? <laughs> Both. <laughs> There you go. The C9. If you have to change your barrel <laughs> on a fucking M2 in a firefight, you really fucked up. If somebody hits it with something. <laughs> the ruptured casing you can never get out. Yeah. Spare me. Spare me. That I would if I the had an M2A1. I would have a spare barrel. No, you're a fucking retard. That's, that's hey. just... Oh, I want M two A one, the fucking inferior version of the M two, the newer right. one. Uh... C six, which is a two forty. It's really funny because they're, they're still have a Woodstock yeah. too. Yeah, all the Canadian ones. Really? Wow. Oh, okay. So that, that's, that's a beef Mac that I have with the. No, no, that's the thing I have with, uh, beef with the film is, uh, since the early two thousands, since like GWAT began, wood is not okay on a weapon in a NATO fucking country. It's not okay. Like, your weapon is flatlined at that point because of NBC or now Seaburn um, uh, threats. You're going to have a synthetic but stock. But this is that. also shot in Jordan wood- at a base where people train, so. Yeah, no, I know. Still, it doesn't like, matter. You don't like, see them in frontline service, but, like, they, the Canada still has No, even in training. Well, yeah, okay, in, in training. C6s. Yeah. I suppose. But it, it's not good because it's it like, yeah, that's. Chemical that's agents, yeah. If, if, yeah, if you get deployed, they're not going to allow that weapon in country. So, yeah, the MT40 Delta. So, um, a Patreon supporter and a good friend of mine that I was deployed with, uh, he was trying to petition his guys when they when we when we were deployed in 2009 to let him because he was a gunner on an MRAP a lot of times, and he's like, "Can I? Can you order the fucking butterfly to convert our 240 Bravos into 240 Deltas so it's more easy to control? And we have more room up in the turret." And that didn't go over well. But, like, yeah, the 240 Delta, that's a fucking awesome platform with I the 240 Bravo. the 240, Bravo, the 240 in general. It's What's the that? one that's lightened. They took, like, eight pounds off of it, and then they put a collapsible buttstock on it. Uh, no. <laughs> you know, it, 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 it's funny because it's, like, one of the last guns that's riveted together. It, it almost looks like a Hotchkiss or like you know, so, like a thirty cal. Oh, you know, it's and that that fucking receiver, dude, it's yeah. really heavy. Oh no, I know. I mean, it's I, really I played heavy. I've with one once, but it's just of all yeah. the modern firearms, it just it's the ones that look the most antiquated. Like if you look at really early machine guns, like they're all, yeah, Etienne, yeah. Like seven or something. It's just very similar because it's a product of the fifties. Yeah, you know, it is, and the whole receiver's one yeah, fucking piece, yeah. and it's like the, That's the why shit's. It's so good. I mean, you it's know. milled. It, oh, I love that yeah. thing. God damn, yeah. So. Yeah, the M134. I've never four. met a vet, or, or sorry, a real vet, because they're always an idiot, but like that um, doesn't like the 240 or whatever iteration it is in a military. Like it, it always, sucks to yeah. carry as light infantry. Unless you right? have the Lima, it, that, it people sucks actually to carry. really like carrying the Lima because it weighed about as much as the 249, but it's a 308. So. Guys used to complain. Yeah, about but how did they shorten the they barrel? They did shorten the barrel. Yeah, they, they shortened they the barrel. They lightened it up yeah, a lot. I don't and then like they that. They put a collapsible stock on it and. Yeah, they did it. They did the same thing with the two four nine, and that was horse shit. The two four nine, I can sort of understand because it's not really a long range weapon. If you're going to shorten the barrel on a two forty, that's fucking. Yeah. It's pointless. Like, well, at least what they the fuck put, you have like, a two forty for that? Stock, not like the shitty like weird wire thing like on the two four nine. They put like a like an M four butt stock on the two forty. Yeah, yeah. Who gives a fuck? Like, there what's the is. point of shortening a barrel and putting a lighter I stock think they on only there? Shortened it by two inches on a two forty. So. It doesn't matter. Like. It's like, don't fuck with the 240. So, like you can you fuck know what? with the saw. I'm probably because it's, wrong, it's a, though. Some fucking guy that actually carried one is going to correct me, and he's going to be like, actually, it's only four pounds lighter, well, and they I'm didn't sure. do anything to it, and yeah. it sucked, and it was heavy. Hey, are you for the Bronx? <laughs> uh, <laughs> we come full circle. There was a saying Beautiful. during the Second World War, because some guys would complain when they went from 03s to Garands of how much heavier Garands yeah, were, they're heavy. and they said that an ounce of sweat equals a pint of blood. It fucking sucks to carry, but when you need it, it's there and it works. So same kind yeah, of thing with a 240. Yeah, but so does a 1903, and it doesn't have a gas system to break or add weight. What's that? We got to, oh, I'm not going to get involved <laughs> yeah. with the gas system. We got shots. Don't take the bait, Brian. Don't take the bait. We got uh, three hours those, of that, so. those shots of that minigun firing. I was like, this just seems like a recruitment commercial. It is. In the desert. 
Yeah. You know. Where you're yeah, literally shooting at nothing yeah. in right. the desert. Yeah, the scene and they put their with CG the tracers yeah. coming back at them. Yeah, yeah, with the fucking stock rock and roll music. Yeah. Well, like like Devin said, fucking, all right, I'd shoot a rock. Yeah, you know, I'd shoot like, it fucking, fucking whatever. Engage. If somebody's like, you can just shoot, I'd be like, I'd fucking find shit to shoot. You don't need to tell me twice. 730, oh, that, I got a cluster of graphite. Fucking blow it up. <laughs> That's why they didn't fire the 203 because it was fucking airsoft. Go uh, figure. Fucking yeah. Canadians. One guy like grabbed the end of it. Towards the end of the rescue. The well, no, he he loaded, he 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 insinuated that he was loading around and he he popped the tube hey, open. This guy. Hey, yeah. Hey, hang on. Go yeah. back up to that photo right there the, the, with the muzzle flash right there. As I have silencer? that. <laughs> I have that same muzzle flash in my uh, VFX you know library. That's yeah. That yeah. That's from Action Essentials. I know that muzzle flash. Yeah. You can go fuck yourself, movie. Twelve million dollars to to have, yeah. Twelve million dollars for action essentials. What, the M two four two. They never used. Okay, this is my whole argument from earlier. Look at this amazing twenty five millimeter auto cannon. Yeah. This amazing piece of machinery that could blow away a whole Taliban wave attack, like they did in the Chosen Reservoir. But why didn't they use it? Because why not? Because strikers. Why not? We're four minutes away. I can see the Chinese Taliban wave attack coming right. through the, the RPG English. Seven here. I'm gonna do I, nothing. I have, God, it's I, not a Taliban movie if it doesn't have an RPG. I, 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 I just remember say this. something. I also want. I He's also like want trigger. this in my movie. I want an RPG rocket to travel as fast as a football being thrown, and I want the explosion to be the size of like like a tiny little door charge. And that was also thrown. The angle of that RPG would not make sense for any of the buildings around. The guy had to be at like an 87 degree angle to that wall. Yeah. Above well, here, yeah. here's the thing. Like, I've never encountered something like an RPG-7 in they real suck. life. Um, but, well, here's a, well, yeah. can I talk? <laughs> um, so, uh, I, uh, <laughs> I wasn't asking for your input. I was still talking. <laughs> Carry on. This reminded me of Reveille. Oh, my God. <laughs> You're doing but, a good uh, job, Michael. I don't care what anyone says. Thank you. Um, but uh, but anyway, so like the, I've seen that obviously used in many movies. I've seen actual footage of that thing fire, and it's like is it's like just shooting a bullet. It just goes like it's bam, bam. It. Just yeah. it's not like this. Yeah, this. It's sh- pretty quick. Yeah, unless yeah, you don't clean out the tube and the carbon builds up and they just plop out. Or the like end. how fifty fucking percent of the time they don't even fucking go off and a rocket just smashes into the fucking ground or whatever they're shooting at because they're all. <laughs> I've seen years old. I've seen videos where I've seen guys where guys, well, guys, well, they just like explode when they pull the yeah. trigger on that. Well, uh, all the rockets well, all are so that. bad. They're all from the fucking sixties and seventies. They haven't like made any. Well, it's a good thing yeah. this guy doesn't have his. It's a good thing this guy doesn't have yeah. his finger on the trigger. I was gonna so. say too, the way this guy's holding it is it's the oh. actor. Well, he's, he's got his fuck. hand. No. If you look at the picture of the average on like the recoil like the thing that you supposed the to trigger like, guard. Help, no like look at it. he's got his finger on like where the like where you put against your shoulder on the rpg goes and they're also incredibly simple it's a fucking hammered fired yeah. rocket like mm-hmm. literally you have to cock and expose it's yeah like, you cock it, it on the revolver. back of the handle yeah yeah you know it's and again people that don't play with them or get it close to them, they don't know that i mean it's i don't like, want it's to such know a, it. it's a explosive i don't like <laughs> well, explosive. it's such a simple design it's like it was totally stolen from the last german panzerfaust which was a panzerfaust with the mg42 fucking trigger i thought it was based off the, the rpg2 which was used in world war ii to combat the panzerfaust i've never heard of that you're talking about the sks 45 <laughs> no the, next, the, the like, rpg you know, the rpg2 <laughs> is the, the precursor <laughs> the russians made a bunch of them. that was yeah. used in the 50s and yeah, 60s the rpg1 dude. the fucking the russian glass ball flame the PTRS. Thing that they used to d- kill <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> but anyway right, uh, hammer fire on, rocket. Right. i, I have a quick question Dem, can you give me in a Quick oh, twenty God. second description with your mouth. How oh, how an RPG oh, how, how an RPG seven <laughs> sounds. The your asshole. Yeah. yeah. How how an it should RPG sound when sounds. it goes by you. Yeah. Um. So when it goes by you, normally don't really hear too much because everyone's usually shooting. Uh. For one. Um. But like you hear it go <laughs> off. It has a very distinctive like cloud because the back blast of an RPG is just heinous. So you'll see this big back blast normally before anything else. You'll see you'll see it go off and you'll see all the fucking pressure wave go off behind this guy and it'll blow trees around and it'll blow dust up, you know, and stuff like that. And normally they don't fucking pay attention to who's behind him, so they usually fucking deafen some guy that's like ten feet behind him, <laughs> you know? And but like 
We're it's at okay. 20 seconds. And then all they do is, then the explosion goes off, or the rocket just fucking embeds in something. Because half the time, they don't actually go off. Right. So so it, so it doesn't sound like a giant ball of rocket filled with Mentos going by you. No, okay. you don't. hear. You hear the, like, boof of the concussion, right? and then it just goes off. Right. Or it doesn't. One of the two, so... Here, uh, if it's far enough away, you can actually see the little. It leaves a little bit of a stream when it's it rolling through the trail, air, but yeah. not okay. much. But like, yeah. I got a little video to, to share. Yeah, yeah, hit me with it. Just yeah, just do IMFDB quick. We're almost done. Uh, the rec- oh yeah, the, the one they were bringing yeah, up to the fucking yeah. Okay. Set up no, ten yeah. feet from the building. There is the picture. Yeah. And then they. <laughs> I was gonna yep. share my Blow screen. Um, yeah. Here we go. Here's, here's some here's some good back yeah, I've seen yeah. This. The guy this guy gets like, nailed. Shit. I've seen yeah. this. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. yeah, yeah, it's like oh, it's molten sand that comes out the back as a counterweight. Yeah, Garen, goddamn T, oh, that killed that guy. Like, it, yeah. it happens yeah. a lot. It's especially like in Libya and Syria, like ten years. Because I used to watch combat footage like all the time. Oh yeah, me too. Yeah, yeah. you yeah. got a clear back blast by like twenty five yards on an RPG. Well, random story, but. So Nate is a big World War II nerd, 29th division. Michael is a big oh, Omaha, you know, D-Day nerd. He loves everything about it. And they both shared the same story from uh, Baumgarten or something's last name. Or, Hal Baumgarten. Know, when yeah. They were in England, the bazooka story. Oh, yeah. They, uh, they, they forgot to, uh, uh, during, when they were training on Slapton Sands, uh, a bazooka team, they forgot to uh, pull the correct wires on the rocket when they hooked it up to the... Uh, to the tube and when they shot it it like it was just it was like still connected to the to the bazooka and it like hurled the guy forward and it blew, <laughs> blew him to bar. pieces yeah you have to push up lift up and put the rockets through before you connect the yeah wire. like a safety and you don't so do that the then you, it, yeah yeah it's, yeah, it's, it's too far enough and mm-hmm. so it was basically like the guy just you know like rocketed himself into uh into that'll the teach him just blew <laughs> well, you're killing. Like, well, so he fucking learned. Don't do it again. He, he fucking learned. <laughs> yeah. And obviously, they cut yeah, it on camera also... so they could show it to everyone else and be like, "Don't be a fucking idiot." There's also a a, a, f- a photo that I've seen where a guy uh, fired a live round uh, w- into a uh, into a rifle grenade, and uh, and the the rifle like there's a photo of the rifle like it blows blown to pieces. Yeah, and like killed him. You know, like instantly, like when when it did it. Just so I remember, there was a trick during the war where they actually used to take sixty millimeter mortar rounds and put them and on rifle. Put grenades. them on rifle grenades. Yeah. I've seen, I've seen them. That do was that a here. really cool fucking trick. <laughs> right? Yeah, but it would probably like fuck up the rifle because well, who gives the a fuck? recoil Uncle Sam is, will get you know, that's fair. Is insane. You know? They're yeah. making, the they're making guys, millions of them. Mm-hmm. Fuck it. It's not my gun. It's the taxpayer's <laughs> gun. Right. Well, also, you're gonna get the shit burned out of you by the propellant from the mortar coming out of the fucking fins. Like, oh yeah. The, but it was, uh, yeah, it was it's, it's not going to be effective. I thought the propellant was yeah. the Swiss cheese stuff, the the the, the cheese squares, the wax. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but it comes out of the stem of like the fucking mortar round. I think so. No, when I, the mortar goes on, oh, it comes out of yeah. the stem. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. there's holes in the stem, yeah. and yeah, it's gonna yeah, burn the shit out of you because it's usually consolidated in the tube and forced up and out. Right, right, right. The cheese, the, the know, cheese like squares these... add add more power, more. That that's to get it out of the tube okay. faster and harder. Isn't that for range too? You take yeah, I thought I thought you around, add like or cuttings? take away depending on what. Yeah, you're... yeah, but that that shit burns up in the tube. Oh, okay. It adds There's a shitload of pressure in the tube in the to get it out to go out faster and and okay. farther out. For people that totally so don't more... know what the fuck we're talking about, there's like four or five American cheese, literally American cheese, looking like square blocks between the fins and the head of a mortar round. And uh, it's part of the propellant. And, and, and it literally, it's literally like so. it has the same shape that you would do, like if you put like a "Do Not Disturb" sign on your on your hotel door. It's like the same kind of thing. It's like you're putting it around yeah. the yeah. And you can remove them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You can remove yeah. them if you yeah if you don't want as much oomph. But yeah, it's like you know when they, when they say like, war, like at least on water rounds. Well, they're, yeah, they're kind of whitish sure. yellow now. Yeah. Like they're like they're, they look like donuts now, but that you can take them off yeah. and. um and uh, yeah, if you say like charge four, that means all four of the fucking rings are on there. If they say charge two, you take two of them off, but you'll know before the fire. I'm not a mortar guy, I never was, but like I know most of my friends mm-hmm. were mortar guys. Explains a lot. And um, 11 Charlies, and or not most of my friends. 
the fuck did I say that for? A lot of my friends were mortar guys, and they were explaining this Reed to me. Reed Eugene Sledges, uh, you know, uh, with the old breed, and he's a mortar man, and he'll tell you what the I fucking hate explosives. I don't yep. want to be anywhere near any explosives. So. Yeah, Chris Chris said the same thing, same. and then he ended up chucking three crates yeah. of grenades. Oh. <laughs> All the real veterans <laughs> yeah, fucking right. hate explosives. Yeah. They do. They're they because yeah. they're terrifying. Like when they go off, it's he like he was the closest shit. thing to magic I've ever seen. He, All right, if you could just make a human being turn into a different fucking dimension to the point where you could breathe them in now because you disintegrated <laughs> them that hard, Christ. I don't want to be anywhere near that. I don't want to have anything to do with it. It's like what happens in the glass. Yeah. You know? So. <laughs> All right. So should we wrap this bitch up with the yeah. ratings out of ten? Yes. I don't think there's anything there's left to say. And yeah. this is going to be no, so there's freaking not. quick. Final sentence and rating. If you, if you can yeah. say anything else, yeah. Nathaniel start? Hawthorne, you go first. Fuck you didn't you didn't forget. Last to comment first. You didn't fucking review. forget. Oh, God. Uh, oh no, I'm never gonna forget. Confederate that. widow you over there. Yourself, um, you know, you should have just told me your name was Nathaniel, uh, and I would just call you Nathan <laughs> um, or Nate. This movie's a piece of shit. Don't watch it. Move. I'm done. Oh right, uh, rating. Uh, right, 10. fucking right. That's, that's right. A, that's what it says on the DVD. Number. Yeah. yeah. Um, That's what it says in quotes on the DVD. This movie's a piece of shit. Don't watch it. (laughs) Two out of ten screaming Mel Gibson's. I'm done. Yeah. There's literally nothing more I can say. This is a steaming pile of dog shit. Who are you passing it off to? Yeah, the only thing I have to say is I wish there were better Canadian war movies. I mean, I know that Canada doesn't have this culture that, like, the U.S. does. That's one thing we really try to do here. We try to like show as many foreign as American war films because there's so many disproportionately more World War II, Vietnam War films from, you know, American perspective than there are other things. But it's just really sad. I was looking forward to like, you know, again, having you on, Devin, and talking about Canadians in Afghanistan. It's, it's very interesting. I'm very glad we did. But I just wish we had a better medium to discuss it. And it's just, yeah, it was a pretty horrible movie. Um I was going to give it a very low rate until the the last the, the thing that I literally it was like gave it a point for me was when that guy got shot in the face and I'm like okay give credit where credit's due. Um so that being said, I'm going to give this a 3 out of 10 because it's it's really fucking bad. I mean yeah, it's uh it's not even worth watching if like you want to learn about Canadians in combat. It's like just talk to people like Devin or watch like news things cuz like it's just it's a waste of your fucking time. I mean, it's long as fuck. Two hours long. Holy shit. Like, fucking just end the misery. <laughs> Two hours of Kind of like this podcast. Oh, my God. Yeah, th- this will be officially... <laughs> yeah, this will probably end up being the length of the film. And, and watch this instead of the movie. Like, you know, in 10 years from now, we'll have a higher GDP from people watching the review than watching the film. Because they will save time <laughs> to not watch the film. <laughs> and that being said... Oh, there's a fucking rainbow outside, dude. I passed my... I passed does, the talking gay pillow does in the gay hour be, to Mr. Does Mike Does Mike Birch. B have ADHD? <laughs> yes or no? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, doesn't one out of ten reviews. Cashier. Ten <laughs> doesn't take a head cash at Walmart to figure that one out. But like, why are you looking um, for a job? Oh, <laughs> fuck no. no. Um. Anyway, yeah, Devin, he's got promoted from Greeter. Right <laughs> Go ahead and fuck right off. Uh. Anyway, yeah. So basically the same thing. It's like I wanted to like it. I really tried, and it was just like a flaming pile of dog shit. It's like it. It would have been so cool to just kind of see what the Canadians have done in Afghanistan because they were there like (laughs) and it's like no but you know what I mean like the Canadians were there they participated blah blah blah. and it's like this was just it was like again the Bourne series mixed with the Hurt Locker which is a you like that That, 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 anyway um, dumpster fire of a combo good analogy (laughs) oh you dumpster fire is not anywhere near a strong enough term for that fucking piece of shit that I will never fucking waste my time watching again. So no, we're not doing it on this fucking podcast. Um, but this is a uh, reminiscent of that, that style, that kind of whatever. Um, the, the gear was good. I even noticed that cause Devin's educated me a lot on the weaponry of the Canadian forces and all that shit. That's decent. But like the lines were shitty. The fucking, yeah, there was so many, they got a lot of the micro shit done right but the macro was just so fucking terrible it's 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 unforgivable and the whole plot on the story like this guy knocks up a chick and it's like oh now this guy's definitely gonna die yeah, like we know that for a fact yeah. 
like 100 percent it's like there's no getting out his of his house this gets alive. obliterated by a fucking <laughs> 150 105 or whatever it was. yeah well, well that's that's something we should have talked about but i don't want to say any more time in my life talking about this fucking thing so um yeah i'm gonna give this uh like brian said because they got a lot of the micro shit right I mean, it's got a point and a three out of ten don't watch it don't waste your fucking time michael yes um so yeah it was uh it, it's it's like i say it's uh it's a very milk toast uh, type war movie it, fair, it felt like a it was a pbs like production or something like that it felt uh very tame despite the fact having a lot of violence and you know fucks and, and stuff like that uh it was still it's it has still had this weird like amateur sci-fi early 2000s felt, movie yeah 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 it's like I, was, I mean the digital stargate i, I mean help. right yeah um so yeah i hated that about it um again when i was it's, it, a lot of it felt very pretentious too that like uh you know uh paul gross was uh you know just he thought he was being so deep and he has like these moments with his fucking narration and stuff like that. It's just like, what are you talking about, dude? And like, his Southern American accent. <laughs> yeah. It's like, what are you talking about? What the fuck are you, is this? Um, didn't even know what the story was, but uh, yeah, with the ghost guy and then this guy with this chick and then fucking silver Fox captain. Uh, it was just like, uh, uh, uh. so yeah. Um, uh, two, I'm going to get two and a half or not two and a half. Sorry. Two out of 10 is two, two out of 10. Fuck you, Paul. Paul <laughs> you haven't seen Passchendaele. It's true work of art yet. His piece de resistance. Yeah. Well, I thought the plot and the storytelling in this movie was just atrocious, which is what you want to go see a movie to do. I wouldn't even bother because it's so hammed up and, and awful. It's so predictable and terrible. But, like, it did have some saving graces. And, like I said, they did accurately portray a lot of, not like, how Canadian soldiers act or do anything, but like a lot of the gear and everything was correct. And that's something that is very hard to do because Canada has like super strict laws about exporting shit or portrayal of stuff that's that's, and like things like that. That's where that 12 million went. Yeah, p- pretty much. So, but like <laughs> seeing all the actual like Canadian guns and Canadian uniforms and Canadian armor and like helmets and stuff being correct, uh, went went a long ways for me but i i still would just give it a three out of ten it's terrible i mean because ultimately if the movie didn't have any of that and the plot was good it would have been better it would have been better but like i i'm glad they got the tiny little details and shit right but like but that's not enough it's to say not enough to because it, it's not a movie <laughs> it's literally like a fairy tale that somebody just reworked into a canadian war movie and it's terrible it's awful, and it doesn't do Canada any justice at all. It's awful, awful. And, I mean, there's so many other better stories they could have told other than the construction of a 10-fucking-mile stretch of road. That you pissed on. That Yeah, that nothing happened in. Nothing happened during the construction of this 10-mile stretch of road, basically. Except, except Devin's piss. That's right. Well, you, yeah. you know how long yeah. it takes to pave a 10-mile stretch of road? It's like... Four days. I thought you were gonna say, do you know how long it takes to yeah. piss off? A long road? time if they're it's making like four if seconds. They're making you drink a bunch of water out of those really hot ass fucking plastic bottles. Yeah. No, it was all those rippets. Yeah, it's all the fucking red, white, and blue rippets, which Mike missed out on, unfortunately. Red, white, those and blue. red, white, and blue rippets are the way to go. Oh yeah. They're awful. They will yeah. or the mini cans? Kill you. Yeah, the little the fruit yeah. the fruit fruit punch. Yeah. Oh no, the red, white, and blue is the way to go. Way to go. So, putting all these numbers into the massive computer that will decide when the Vietnam War will end, we come up with a number of 2.6 out of 10, mm. which, as far it's as lower, I know, is it's lower the than second midway. worst movie. It's lower, it's lower, it lower than Midway. Midway's a three point something. At, at least Midway had some That's with Mike A wow. giving Midway a point zero one. <laughs> Wow. wow, that's how much I gave it. Wow. I don't remember. So that. it sounds about what midway Top should get. Okay, okay, for real, Mike yeah. A. What score is higher for real yes. score? We accepted the point zero one for midway, but if you had to, if you okay. had to re re rate both of them side by side, what goes higher? 
Jesus Christ. Uh, I, uh, that's, that's a is, hard this one. This is pounding your nuts um, flat with a wooden a mallet. Shit sandwich or a soup right sandwich? Now. This is like <laughs> yeah. you right. give a good answer or you get raped by Marine between two point think... guns. Uh, okay, like, Devin I, watches you with a yeah. camera. <laughs> I think I would rather watch this again because I think it's there. It has some so bad it's good things in it. I mean, Midway does too. But like, I think I don't know. There's some of this where it just it felt like so pretentious to me that I was laughing at it, and so I, I don't know. I think maybe I'd watch this again over Midway. Also, I think Midway might have been a little bit longer than this. It was, I think. This one's for Vancouver. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. So it's like, I'd rather watch this pile of shit. I mean, but they're like neck right, and neck. Right. That's you know? why it's I like, asked. Yeah. It's hard. They, yeah. yeah. It's garbage. Right. They both I'd rather suck watch, dick. I'd yeah. rather watch Midway than this. Dude, the movie would be yeah. better really? if there was dick sucking in it. Like, to be honest. <laughs> There, to be fair, there was there was some very aggressive. There was finger some finger blasting and some hand holding and stuff yeah. like that. That yeah. was so out of the some, blue some, as well. It's like I'm going on a mission. Yeah, it was pretty. Bam. She was like she was like there was some dong wrangling. I and love some how finger she, blasting she going literally on. had. I'll a wake line, you up. I would climb over this table and fraternize the shit out of you. <laughs> <laughs> that was so. Yeah. I, I made my eyes roll, dude. Like I was so. I, yeah. By that point, it was just like just end this yep. whatever this is like, oh, well yeah. whatever this just like is. this podcast i have to poop really fucking right, bad so let's run it on and i've been holding it in just to hear mike make another shit story and uh and well this is probably gonna be a, one of those like describe your last shit with the movie title there will be blood kind of deals so daniel <laughs> so, so, so daniel day lewis like, is that what you're saying <laughs> so listen no, no it's mo- come out movie, okay. movie, to, to, movie, to, re- to, movie reference anyone no, to, uh, okay. I get the reference. Yeah. Daniel Day Lewis, yeah. he was in There Will Be Blood. Yes, but um, <laughs> he killed the guy in the bowling pin. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, but, yeah, that was great. Yeah, um, Paul Dano. Uh, but anyway, so uh, uh, to, to wrap up this review, Mike, you should take your microphone into the bathroom yeah, and with just you and, take uh, a oh shit. God. Really I'm not doing, doing that again. again. Yeah, yeah, he's not. Just... It's happened before on a live stream, oh, and I thought no. I was muted. It, it did happen. <laughs> we need some fan service. Fan service. No, fan I think service. it's a live no, shit De- story. Devin was, was there, there for, for that, that one because I was listening, and then and then you're like, "You could hear that." Did you guys hear that? And everybody in the chats like <laughs> yeah. he's shitting, and I'm like, "Oh That's fuck!" Literally, I and heard it. And I was like, to... "Oh god, he's shitting, isn't he?" It's like you hear a headset yeah. hit the floor really yeah. fast. <laughs> you know, it's like, but no, well, like, I was trying to. Yeah, I was trying to hit we'll, the we'll, mute we'll, button. We'll, yeah, it was fucked up. But anyway, um, don't watch this movie. <laughs> it's uh, it's in the category of midway. Uh, hopefully, we have saved you, and you've listened to this beforehand, and you don't waste your money on this film that literally made less money than probably eighty percent of you have in your bank accounts. So, thank you for joining us for another review. Thank you so much, Devin, for being on. We hope that we can have you again in the future as our Canadian expert, and you know, uh, make some more content. But uh, thanks for tuning in, and uh, until the next time. Fuck you, Nathan. Fuck you fuck. No, fuck Paul Gross. I'm right here. I'm fuck right you, here. Paul you can't Gross. keep doing that. <laughs> fuck you, Nathan. I, no. Stop. All right. I'm just feeling left out. Nobody wants to fuck me. <laughs> Devin, 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 I'll meet you by the Porter Jobs. All right. <laughs> All right. You better be there. That's right. Thanks for joining us. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure to leave a rating. Otherwise, Mel Gibson won't stop screaming. If you like this content, make sure to check out our Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram pages. If you want to directly support our work, make sure to check out our Patreon. All these links are in the description below. Until the next time, scuttlebutt out.